Welcome to the Gen Z Nostalgia Iceberg full series. Well, here it is, the entire Gen Z Nostalgia Iceberg in one beautiful video. This is the best way to watch this series. There are some changes made and a couple new entries added as well. So be sure to watch through the video and check that out. We start off with some more commonly known things and then go back into the deep recesses of your nostalgia. Here to help me with this video is someone who you may be familiar with, Book of Valis. Now, this video is long, so consider it kind of a movie. Grab yourself a nice snack, sit back, turn down the lights, and enjoy. Starting off at the clear skies, we have SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants is one of the most recognizable and iconic shows of all time. The show came out in 1999 and had an incredible first three seasons that still hold up very, very well to this day. SpongeBob is still airing to this day, but it's kind of gone downhill. The original episodes are some of the most memorable and nostalgic shows for most 2000s kids. Diary of a Wimpy Kid Diary of a Wimpy Kid is a series of books created by the author Jeff Kinney. The first book came out in 2007 with many sequels following it. These books were the greatest back in the day, and everyone read them. There were three really good movies based off the books, and they were all super nostalgic. Minecraft Minecraft and the content around it is some of the most nostalgic stuff out there to a lot of people. Everything down to the music, gameplay, and old sound effects, the YouTubers who played it, and the merchandise is just peak memories. Minecraft has a place in mine and many other people's hearts. It's still very popular to this day, but in kind of a different way. Roblox. Often compared to Minecraft, Roblox is a massive website where you can play games made by other users and make games yourself. The game had its first release in 2004, making it older than Minecraft. With an art style that's very reminiscent of LEGO, the game attracted a lot of kids. The game was very different back in the day, and it was a lot more simple than it is now. Old Roblox is still really charming and nostalgic, and that's why it's here. Lego. Lego is definitely one of the most iconic toys of all time. With many different licensed sets, Lego has reached tons of kids, and the toys are just great. To me, some of the most nostalgic sets are the Spongebob ones, the Star Wars ones, and Indiana Jones, and the often overlooked Power Miners. Wii. The Nintendo Wii was one of the most popular consoles of the 2000s. The Wii was owned by tons and tons of people, including people you'd never think would play video games, like your grandparents or your weird uncle. The Wii had so many iconic games that are fondly remembered by millions. The Nintendo DS The Nintendo DS was basically the staple 2000s handheld console. Everyone had at least some version of the DS. Releasing in 2004 and being discontinued in 2013, the DS was owned by lots and lots of kids. Like the Wii, there are tons of super iconic games on it that'll make tons of people tear up upon replaying. Cool Math Games CoolMathGames.com is a really iconic website that used to host Flash games. The site was often unblocked on school internet servers since it had math in the name, so kids could play it on the computers at school when all the other websites were blocked. To be clear, the website wasn't an educational one. There were some actual math games, but it was really more mini-clip style, just fun flash games. The website is still around to this day, which makes me very, very happy. Grand Theft Auto Grand Theft Auto, or GTA, is a series of open-world sandbox games where you can basically do whatever you want. The games are not for kids, in any way. They have a lot of inappropriate material in them, but regardless, lots of Gen Z kids ended up playing them, making them very, very nostalgic to some. There was also a big GTA community on the internet, so that also adds to it. Angry Birds Angry Birds, I think I can safely say, is one of the most iconic and one of the greatest mobile games out there. The game was a simple phenomenon. With super simple gameplay and graphics, the game captured the hearts of millions and is super nostalgic to almost every kid who played it around the time. Toys R Us Ah, uh, this one hits close to home. Toys R Us was the greatest toy store out there. Being a magical place for kids to go, these massive toy stores had what felt like infinite aisles of toys and video games. There was really nothing like going to a Toys R Us and looking at all the Bionicle and their canisters alongside all the Lego and Star Wars figures and it was just, it was great. Personally, I had a very special experience with Toys R Us since I grew up at the iconic Times Square location. This place had a ferris wheel, a giant animatronic T-Rex, and even Willy Wonka's freaking chocolate factory. The place was just amazing, but unfortunately in 2015 the place was closed down permanently. Later, in 2017, Toys R Us officially filed for bankruptcy, closing all of its stores in the following years. Fortunately, Toys R Us is actually making a return. They plan on having mini stores and Macy's stores in 2022, so it's not over yet. Blockbuster. Blockbuster was the video store back in the day. Originally offering VHS tapes, the company branched out into video games and later DVDs. The stores were really magical in a way. The color, the smell of the plastic and popcorn, it was fantastic. It kind of had the vibe of a movie theater. 
The place offered overpriced popcorn and candy, which made the whole experience really special. Right over there, there used to be a Blockbuster store, which is the one I went to as a kid. Unfortunately, the company filed for bankruptcy after making some bad financial decisions and suffering through the 2006 recession. It was also a little hard for them to compete with a little DVD mail-in service by the name of Netflix. Over 1 million stores closed down, with the number of stores getting smaller and smaller every year. Now only one blockbuster exists. It's still kicking in Bend, Oregon. With a documentary on it, now recently opening as an Airbnb service, the place should stick around for a little while. There's still some licensed blockbuster merchandise being sold, and I actually have some. Rage Comics. Rage Comics were a style of internet memes that were beyond popular back in the day. Some of the most iconic meme characters actually originate from Rage Comics like the troll face and the Wojak. The comics and their art style are very nostalgic to those who were around on the internet back in the day. iCarly. iCarly was an old Nickelodeon sitcom about a girl who started a famous web series and had to adapt with the fame and keep the content going. It started airing in 2007 and stopped in 2012, and the show was super popular with tweens back in the day, and so it's very fondly remembered by millions. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy was a very iconic children's science show hosted by the titular Bill Nye. The show was often shown in schools, which exposed the series to a ton of kids. So for many, Bill Nye made learning a fun and entertaining experience, which makes them look back on it very positively. The Magic School Bus This was a book series and animated show, which, similar to Bill Nye, made education fun. The Magic School Bus was often a science-based show, and it was a ton of fun to watch as a kid. Shrek Shrek was one of the most iconic movies of the 2000s. With an all-star cast and edgy anti-Disney humor, the film series was a smash hit. There was tons of merchandise of it, and sequels, and spin-offs, all that stuff. Shrek is really such a 2000s thing. It, it ages well, but you can really tell when it was made. Phineas and Ferb Phineas and Ferb is an extremely popular Disney Channel show about two boys who do very extravagant things every day of their summer. The show was beloved by audiences for its creative set pieces and characters. In 2015, the show was cancelled to the dismay of many. Old Windows Operating Systems This one is pretty self-explanatory. The old Windows operating systems were very charming and retro. The glossy, outdated look alongside the sound effects and built-in screensavers bring back many to simpler days. My family's always been a Mac family, but even then I have a lot of nostalgia for classic Windows operating systems, probably mostly Windows XP since they were very commonplace in New York libraries and museums, so you could just kind of use them and there was a bunch of preset like educational games on them. Pokemon Pokemon is a series of video games, a bunch of different anime, and a trading card game. Featuring often cute monsters who battle each other, this game is beloved by children all over the world, and it still is. I personally played Black and White 2 on the DS and I loved it. I also remember watching the original anime series and having a massive crush on Misty back when I was 10. Captain Underpants Releasing in 1997, Captain Underpants is a series of kids' books about a silly superhero who is always wearing underpants. The book was beloved by kids, and it's still pretty popular to this day, with the movie releasing only a few years ago. The Amazing World of Gumball The Amazing World of Gumball was an animated series on Cartoon Network that was genuinely pretty good. The show had a lot of kind of edgy jokes in it, and legitimately funny storylines that made the show special. The art style was also really cool, featuring 2D cartoon characters living in a mostly photorealistic world with a bunch of side characters that were often in different genres as well. The show was unfortunately cancelled in 2019, but made a return in 2020. Temple Run Temple Run is a classic mobile game where you played as an Indiana Jones style explorer running from these creepy ape things. The game was basically an endless high score based thing, and it was a lot of fun. The game got some sequels and an arcade port, but it's kind of fallen off in recent years, but the game is still very fondly remembered by many who played it back in the day. Plants vs. Zombies Plants vs. Zombies is a video game that is exactly what it sounds like. You plant plants on your lawn who defend against hordes of cartoony zombies. The game is insanely fun and has an amazing gameplay loop that is really timeless. Unfortunately, the more recent PvZ games are more freemium, pay-to-win style games, with the original is still on the Xbox for only $5, I think it's also on Steam too. So if you want to revisit your childhood game untouched, then that is the way to go. Five Nights at Freddy's Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the biggest horror games of this generation. I personally was a huge fan of it back then, learning about it pretty early on, only about a week after the game was released. I even made a video allegedly showing a real-life Freddy Fazbear's pizza restaurant I found on Google Maps. It was- ah, here it is. Uh-oh, help wanted. So this is real, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Um... This is real. My Little Pony. My Little Pony, specifically the show's most recent incarnation, Friendship is Magic, was an extremely popular show with kids. And grown men. 
For whatever reason, the show had a really wide appeal and tons of people loved it. It was all over meme culture back in the day and it was inescapable, which if you were a fan was awesome. If you weren't, then that kinda sucks, but regardless, this show was super nostalgic to tons and tons of people, including myself. I used to be a brony back in the day and I even went to a couple brony cons. Yeah, it was, uh, it was weird, but it was a lot of fun. Annoying Orange. Annoying Orange is one of the original YouTube titans. Created by a man named Dane Bogue, the show was a parody of overly annoying kids shows, but it gave it a dark twist with the character often getting chopped in half with a knife at the end of the videos. The Annoying Orange blew up and got itself a TV show on Cartoon Network and even some toys. I personally wasn't a fan of it back in the day, finding it unnecessarily gruesome towards the other fruit, and I even made a video where I killed the Annoying Orange. Hey guys, it's me, the Annoying Orange. And, um, today? I don't know, I'm just here and my eyes turned red. Uh, you know what you need, Annoying Dude? What? Knife. Ah! Pixar movies. This one is super self-explanatory. Pixar films are some of the greatest animated movies you can get. Most of them are truly incredible films. Hell, my favorite movie of all time is Wally. -E. It's super nostalgic. I'd be surprised if there are people watching this who don't have nostalgia for the original Toy Story, or just Toy Story in general. PewDiePie. PewDiePie needs no introduction. Formerly the most subscribed person on YouTube, PewDiePie has been making videos for millions since 2010. His older videos are a time capsule of the early 2010s and are very classic. Flash Game. Back in the day, there were tons of online video games made using Adobe's Flash software. There were millions of these, and lots of them were very nostalgic to so many people. Unfortunately, in 2021, Adobe stopped supporting Flash, meaning that most websites hosting the games wouldn't be able to play them anymore. There's still ways to get them back, and Newgrounds has a way of playing them, which uh, we'll get to that later. Jetpack Joyride Jetpack Joyride was an old mobile game that was tons of fun. The game had you play as a guy named Barry who acquires a backpack and flies around a laboratory, picking up a bunch of fun power-ups along the way. The game was super fun, and one of those old mobile games is just good. Fruit Ninja Fruit Ninja is another classic mobile game where you slid your finger across the screen to cut fruit. The game was simple but fun and very popular. One Direction One Direction was an incredibly popular boy band beloved by most preteen girls in the early 2010s. The band's music was played all over the place, which makes listening to it nowadays very nostalgic. Rugrats The Rugrats was a cartoon about a bunch of babies going on adventures, mostly in their imaginations. The show was beloved by kids of a bunch of ages, being one of the classic Nicktoons. This show was watched by so many kids, both Gen Z and Millennials. PlayStation 2 slash 3 The PlayStation 2 and 3 were the PlayStation consoles that were around in the 2000s. In fact, the best-selling console of all time was the PlayStation 2, so tons and tons of people had it, making it super nostalgic nowadays. The games and the graphics, all of it, it's, it's good stuff. Jimmy Neutron Jimmy Neutron was a CG animated comedy show on Nickelodeon that was really popular back in the day. Starting off as a feature-length film and later becoming a series, Jimmy Neutron has a really unique and dated art style, which makes it instantly recognizable. The show was cancelled in 2006, so this is more nostalgic to earlier Gen Z kids or millennials. I personally remember loving this show back when I was a little kid. The Simpsons The Simpsons is a show that really needs no introduction. Being one of the most recognizable and high-quality cartoons of all time, The Simpsons was really something great. A lot of Gen Z kids might have been introduced to The Simpsons from The Simpsons Movie, which released in 2007. Despite majorly going downhill, The Simpsons had a really fantastic first nine seasons, and those first nine seasons are just, just really good TV. GameCube GameCube was one of Nintendo's most underrated consoles. Releasing in 2001, the GameCube had some amazing games like Luigi's Mansion, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 and 3, and of course Resident Evil 4. The friendly design of the GameCube makes it a very childlike console, especially considering the fact that it has a handle which makes it look like it could be a lunchbox. The GameCube was a really great console, and I think that Nintendo should re-release more of the games that were on it. Sonic the Hedgehog This one is pretty self-explanatory. Sonic the Hedgehog is and was very popular with kids back in the day, and uh, that's why it's here. Pogs Pogs were a series of toys that brought the classic Milk Caps game into the current generation. Pogs were basically tiny little cardboard discs that you would stack on top of each other and use a slammer piece, which was made of plastic, and you'd flick it into the Pogs. The ones who landed face up you got to keep. These were a huge hit in the 90s and were played by a lot of kids. Rickroll 
This is a classic one. So all over the internet, there's basically this little bait and switch prank that we've all put at least once. Basically, the idea is that you provide someone with something that they want. For example, if it's a certain YouTube video that someone wants to find, you can claim that you have the link, but then the link you actually provide ends up being the music video for the song Never Gonna Give You Up. This prank was named the Rickroll, off an earlier version of the same prank, where instead of Never Gonna Give You Up, it was a picture of a duck with wheels on it. Classic stuff. ASDF Movie. ASDF Movie is a super classic series of animated comedy videos on YouTube, portraying simple little characters and a bunch of little micro-sketches. The videos were beloved by so many people, including me. I even made a real like parody of ASDF Movie 6. I'm going to punch your face <laughs> in the face. No! You'll never take me alive. Didn't you sell me those good for your eyesight? You lied to me. Everybody do the flop. Courage the Cowardly Dog. This entry is referring to an old Cartoon Network show about a cowardly purple dog who was often put in scary situations. The show had some genuinely scary things in it which ended up being the childhood trauma iceberg. The show is generally looked back upon very fondly to those who watched it and has a lot of scary nostalgia attached to it. Book Fair. This entry is probably referring to those iconic scholastic book fairs we all used to go to. The book publisher Scholastic would host book fairs for schools where kids could buy a huge variety of discounted books. These are very, very nostalgic, and I'm not really sure if they're still a thing nowadays, but still, great stuff. Club Penguin. Club Penguin was a big online game where you played as your own penguin and interacted with other players. You could customize your home, which was an igloo, and you could adopt cute little pets called Puffles. It was a lot of fun, and unfortunately it was shut down in 2017 and had a very sad final minutes. The game lives on in people's hearts, and those who played it will probably never forget it. Adventure Time. Adventure Time was an animated show on Cartoon Network that blew up and people loved it. The show was cancelled in 2018 but had a really good lifetime. Regular Show This one's another Cartoon Network show that came out at a similar time to Adventure Time. Regular Show still stays alive in meme culture today with people reminiscing on the show and its characters. What was unique about it is that it wasn't really an extravagant cartoon, it was kind of more grounded in a way. And that's why people liked it. Creepypasta Creepypasta is a genre of online storytelling that was super popular back in the early 2010s. Characters like Jeff the Killer, Slenderman, Happy Appy, and Laughing Jack, and many 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 more scared kids quite a lot. The stories were really scary at the time, but nowadays they don't really hold up all too well. But that's totally okay. Creepypasta is beyond nostalgic for so many people, and that's why it's here. Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird was a super popular mobile game that released in 2013. It blew up for, uh, some reason. The game was extremely simple. You tapped your finger on the screen, which made the bird flap its wings. You directed it through Super Mario-style pipes, and it was pretty much endless. There was a fake ending someone made of the game, where if you reached 999 points, you would encounter Mario. Of course, this video is fake, but it convinced millions of people. Flappy Bird was taken off the App Store by the creator because he didn't like how addictive it became for people. The Lion King. The Lion King is one of the most famous and beloved Disney movies of all time. The film was watched by many, many Gen Z kids in their childhoods, and that's why it's here. Teen Titans Teen Titans was an animated show about the teenage superhero squad, the Teen Titans. The show was really popular with teens and kids back in the day, and it was darker than your average superhero show, and that's why it's here. It lives on as a crappy and unfunny kid show nowadays. Chuck E. Cheese Chuck E. Cheese is a chain of animatronic slash arcade pizza restaurants that were really popular in the 90s and 2000s. The place was really fun, and I personally went there a lot in my childhood. Chuck E. Cheese has a lot of super nostalgic games, like that whack-a-mole game with the sharks, and that clock thing, and of course, the picture-taking game with Chuck E. in the car. Unfortunately, Chuck E. Cheese filed for bankruptcy in 2020, so we might not have this place for too much longer. Something that isn't really a thing anymore at these places was the animatronic band. Often kind of scary to a lot of kids, these animatronic characters were a really iconic part of this place. Doom. Doom is a long-lasting series of first-person shooter games where you very brutally slay demons. Since the game has been around for a while, lots of 2000s kids played it, and that's why it's here. Beyblade. Beyblade was, and is still surprisingly, a series of toys that were essentially cool, stylized spinning tops. The type of game had been a thing in the past, but Beyblade popularized it a lot to Gen Z kids, at least. Essentially, you'd pull a little cord, and then your spinning top would shoot out of this cord, and then spin quickly. Uh, you'd find an opponent, and whoever's top would stop spinning first wins, and they would like clash into each other and stuff. I remember these being the biggest thing out there, and if you didn't have any Beyblades, you were missing out. 
I don't know if you guys remember this, but I have such vivid memories of going to playgrounds and seeing kids with those red Beyblade like arena things. Just remembering this period of my life, which these little metal tops of the talk of the town is super nostalgic. The Angry Video Game Nerd. The Angry Video Game Nerd is a content creator who has been making videos since even before YouTube. His videos were basically a series of a character played by James Rolfe getting really, really irrationally mad at shitty video games from the past. The series wasn't for kids on account of the fact that the nerd would curse like a sailor in every video, but the series was really classic and still holds up. Surprisingly, the nerd is still doing angry video game reviews to this day. Hot Topic Hot Topic is a chain of stores that specializes in alternative clothing and merchandise. They are best known for catering to goth and emo kids since they've got that whole My Chemical Romance art style going on, and the store was really, really popular back in the day. Hot Topic is my favorite store to shop at, and I've spent uh, too much money on stuff from there. Miniclip Miniclip is a website which hosted thousands and thousands of Flash games that were played by tons of kids and teens. The website is actually still around to this day, only with games of a different format, and honestly, I'd suggest that you check it out if you're bored and you've got nothing else to do. Neopets Neopets was a very cute online browser game where you could play with and take care of a bunch of little animals, lots of which were fictional creatures. The game was beloved by kids because of the interactivity and the art style, and overall, it's just a very classic game. YouTube Poop YouTube Poop is a subgenre of YouTube videos specializing in taking pre-existing things like movies and TV shows, video game cutscenes, etc., and making them crazy and weird. The earlier and most memorable of these were remixes of the old Philips CDI Nintendo games, which bring back a lot of fond memories if you were on YouTube at all back in the day. It started off pretty simple, but nowadays YouTube Poop is a lot more advanced and complex while still having that original charm. Goosebumps Goosebumps is a classic horror book series created by R.L. Stein. The books are for kids, so it's nothing too bad in terms of horror, but as a kid, those books and TV shows were very creepy. The one that freaked me out the most was The Mask. Goosebumps is still a thing in current day, with two movies featuring Jack Black, so maybe the next generation will be able to relate to this being nostalgic too. Fred Figglehorn Fred Figglehorn, commonly referred to as Fred, was a character portrayed by Lucas Cruikshank on YouTube. Fred was a hit, being the first YouTube channel to reach 1 million subscribers, I think. The series basically consisted of Fred, a four-year-old doing wacky stuff despite being in a really dark situation. One of the most recognizable things about this character was the way he spoke. All the videos were very sped up, which made him have an Alvin and the Chipmunks-esque voice. There were also some movies that had John Cena in them, too. And also a full-on TV show on Nickelodeon, which is amazing. Adam Sandler Movies Adam Sandler movies, otherwise known as the greatest cinema to hit the silver screens, were some really fantastic and funny movies. Films like Big Daddy, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison and the Wedding Singer, Bedtime Stories, Fifty First Dates, and many more were watched quite a lot back in the day, and they still hold up now. To be clear, not all Adam Sandler movies are amazing. He's had a lot of awful films in the past, but regardless, his legacy still stands strong in my book. Also, just uh, watch Hubie Halloween. Odor rules! Webkins Webkins were a line of toys that worked in tandem with an online game. What was cool about these seemingly generic plush toys was that when purchased, their tags displayed a code that when entered into the game, your toy would appear in the game, and you'd get to play with it and take care of it there. Webkins were beloved by tons of kids, but unfortunately they fell off a bit. Whether you were just a fan of the plushies, playing the game, or, or pouring milk on your Webkins and sucking it back up, leaving the toy to be sobbing wet and make a loud thud when slammed against walls, you'll probably remember these <laughs> Newgrounds. Newgrounds is a website. <laughs> Newgrounds is a website that primarily hosts games and animations made with Adobe's Flash software. The website was a favorite to so, so many kids back in the day. It was really a non-stop place of edgy fun. People were genuinely Newgrounds famous too. Being created by Tom Folk, people like ONENG, Psychic Pebbles, and Spaz Kid were on the top of the website and made it to the front page frequently. Newgrounds has made a resurgence in recent times thanks to the game Friday Night Funkin', which is really popular both with people who used to frequent Newgrounds and also little kids who like it because it's popular on YouTube. Characters like Pico, Zone 10, Tankman, and many, many others are featured in Friday Night Funkin', repopularizing them. But ignoring Friday Night Funkin', Newgrounds is genuinely something special, and it's such a time capsule of 2000s internet culture. I kind of don't like how popular it's become again because it just kind of normifies it, but it still is pretty great. Pingu. Pingu was a really cute stop-motion show about a claymation penguin just living life and getting into entertaining scenarios. The show was pretty popular as far as I know, and I personally loved it as a kid and watched it frequently. There was a pretty infamous scene with this seal thing, 
The character scared a lot of kids back in the day and was also featured in the childhood trauma iceberg. Super S Stussy. This entry is referring to the iconic graffiti style S. What's special about this? Well, it was something that kids and teens would draw everywhere. Despite looking pretty complicated, it was actually pretty easy to draw since it was basically connecting a bunch of lines together. This S, surprisingly enough, is still drawn by kids to this day, and it's kinda awesome. Hafey zombie car commercial. Alright, this one is a total classic. This entry is referring to a commercial for an energy coffee drink that shows a car driving around a lush green forest until a zombie pops out and screams, and then the drink is shown. This scared a lot of kids back in the day because there was a video posted telling the viewer to listen and watch carefully as there was allegedly a ghost that you could see faintly next to the car. Lots of people have a pretty strong love-hate relationship with this one. Lazy Town. Lazy Town was an Icelandic kids show that promoted healthy eating and exercise. Being a mix of human actors and puppets, the show was pretty beloved by its audience. I know I used to watch it on that old Noggin channel, and it was tons of fun. The character Robbie Rotten is probably the show's most iconic character, being reborn as a meme in 2016. The actor for Robbie Rotten, Stefan Carl Stephenson, was unfortunately fighting cancer at the time, and in one of the internet's best moments, thousands and thousands of people donated money to him to help him survive. Unfortunately, he passed away, but will forever be remembered by the kids who watched the show. Veggie Tales. VeggieTales was a Christian CGI TV show where vegetables would retell stories from the Bible in a very unique and charming way. The show was generally great and had some really funny comedy in it. Later they came out with some movies, and my favorite as a kid was The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. The show also has some genuinely great music and it's overall very nostalgic. Doodle Jump Doodle Jump was a mobile phone game where you would direct this cute little character upwards by tilting the phone left and right. The game was really popular and very addicting since the terrain was constantly changing and it was fun to see how high you could get your score. SMG4 Super Mario Glitchy 4 SMG4 was a YouTube channel featuring Mario with blue clothes doing a bunch of wild things. I'm pretty sure the series is still going on to this day and I remember it being pretty popular back then. It's not really my thing, but I can see how kids would enjoy it. Henry Stickman Henry Stickman was a series of point and click flash games from Newgrounds that were really popular back in the day and made a resurgence recently. I think it was made by the people who made Among Us or something, so this is probably going to be like another weird cross-generation nostalgia thing. Caillou Caillou was a Canadian kids show about a bald four-year-old going through his life and learning lessons along the way. The show was immensely popular back in the day and was watched by tons and tons of kids, including me. In hindsight, Caillou was a total brat, constantly having his tantrums and just generally being very annoying. I want to shout out this video here because it's the greatest thing ever and I highly suggest you give it a watch. Let me show you a little clip of it. I do work like Caillou, fresh shirt like Caillou, swag it up like Caillou, play at the park like Caillou, I'm not gay like Caillou, word of loving like Caillou. I do it like Caillou, I play around like Caillou, my favorite show is Caillou, I sit around like Caillou, with the crew like Caillou, brand new like Caillou, at the door like Caillou, count the four like Caillou. Happy Tree Friends. Happy Tree Friends is a series of animated YouTube videos that presented themselves as happy little kids cartoons, but they were the exact opposite. The show featured these cute little characters getting brutally maimed in a bunch of different ways, sparing no details. The series was unfortunately watched by a lot of kids who didn't know what they were getting into, leading it to traumatize a lot of them. Happy Wheels Ooh, this one hits close to home. Happy Wheels was an incredibly popular kids game that was all over YouTube back in the early 2010s. The game basically consisted of the player trying to direct someone on a vehicle through an obstacle course made to kill them. What made the game kind of scary to me and a lot of other kids was the gore. Though unrealistic, the blood and guts disturbed a lot of kids, but also intrigued many others. The game is pretty fun nowadays, genuinely just because of how bizarre it is and the physics-based gameplay is really good, and well, that's why it's here. Smosh Formerly the biggest channel in all of YouTube, Smosh was a duo comedy channel run by Anthony Padilla and Ian Keacox. They had a ton of videos consisting of different themes and subject matters that were beloved by kids back in the day. One of the most iconic series was one called Food Fight, which is super nostalgic to me. Smosh still exists nowadays, but not really. The content style is really different, especially because Anthony Padilla left to pursue his own YouTube channel. Crazy Frog Crazy Frog was definitely strange, to say the very least. It was a character most known for his titular song from Beverly Hills Cop. What's great about Crazy Frog is that he has a large chunk of his Wikipedia page dedicated to controversies, and I think that's really funny. He also has a dick, which is kind of weird. My Singing Monsters My Singing Monsters was an app where you could get a bunch of different monsters and compose songs using the noises that they made. 
The game had a cute art style, but was one of those kind of freemium mobile games, which kind of prevented me from getting into it, but I remember my friend being super into it, and the capacity it had to make songs was actually pretty impressive. Animal Jam Animal Jam was a classic online web game where you got to design an animal and play with it. The game was kind of similar to Club Penguin in the way that you could interact with the people and play minigames, but there was something kind of special about Animal Jam that made it unique. The art style was pretty cool and unique alongside a lot of set pieces for you to walk around in, and I know I have very fond memories of this game. The monkey was the best, and the claw machine little minigame was also the best. That's uh, That was my experience with the game. Bionicle. Alright, I'm still into these. Bionicle was a line of LEGO toys that released in 2001. The sets were nothing like traditional LEGO sets, being robotic action figures with really cool designs. Bionicle itself had a really cool art style, taking inspiration from the Polynesian tribal themes, giving the toys a very unique look, unlike many others on the market at the time. Something that also made Bionicle really cool was the deep lore and storyline that accompanied it. Unfortunately, in 2010, Bionicle was discontinued, leaving many kids distraught. LEGO released a line called Hero Factory, which used the same building style as Bionicle, but it wasn't nearly as cool. In 2015, however, LEGO released a set of rebooted Bionicle toys, and these sets were more cartoony, and they weren't as unique as the originals, but they were still pretty cool. Unfortunately, LEGO barely tried to advertise these sets at all, leading to terrible sales which made them stop making the line in 2017. These sets seem to be the final nail in the coffin for Bionicle, unfortunately. Big Nate Big Nate was a series of books that was kind of similar to Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The books featured a boy named Nate surviving middle school and trying to get a girlfriend. These books were beloved by tons of kids, which is exactly why it's here. Nostalgia Critic Nostalgia Critic is a character played by Doug Walker. Often compared to the angry video game nerd, the Nostalgia Critic reviews movies from the 80s and gets mad at them. His content used to be hosted on a website by the name of thatguywiththeglasses.com, which on its own is very nostalgic. But after many claims of horrible things happening to people who worked in this group, the name has been a little tarnished. A lot tarnished. The Nostalgia Critic is still a thing to this day on YouTube, and it's exactly how you remember it. Spy Kids Spy Kids was a series of movies that featured, well, Spy Kids. The movie started off relatively low budget, but were a massive success, and really entertaining to kids. The movies had some weird stuff in them, which made them a bit scary to some, but overall these movies were a ton of fun. Wallace and Gromit Wallace and Gromit was a British claymation short film series that's just really, really good. The series spawned some movies that are actually great. The characters were enjoyable and charming, the animation was awesome, and overall the whole series was just really enjoyable. Cut the Rope Cut the Rope was a classic mobile game where you tried to get a piece of candy to a cute little character called Omnom. The game was very simple yet complex at the same time, and it's one of the greatest mobile games out there. It had a couple ports including some DS games and even an arcade port. Goat Simulator Goat Simulator is a classic joke game where you control a goat through a physics-based world. The game is silly for the sake of being silly, and it got a lot of attention online with lots of big YouTubers playing the game. As a kid, I really, really wanted to play this game since I thought it was the funniest thing in the world, so I totally relate to this one. Ghost Caught on Camera Videos This one's pretty self-explanatory. There were a ton of these videos allegedly showing footage of ghosts being caught on camera. Some of these were played off as being real, while others were just screamer videos. At the time, they were pretty convincing and scary. I've got a lot of nostalgia for these videos, and I'm sure lots of you guys do too. The Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny the Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny is an old Flash animation featuring characters from all over the place fighting each other, and it's a ton of fun. The animation has that super classic Flash charm to it, and despite being pretty violent, I could totally see kids loving this video. Hey everyone, it's Ray here, and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Um, I just want to add this in as a quick little announcement for a couple things, which you will definitely find interesting, so don't skip just yet. So if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with the Gen Z childhood trauma iceberg. You know, it's my big thing. No, one of my big things now, and um, there's basically this project where we're making a Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny parody only with the Gen Z Childhood Trauma Iceberg. So the song's actually finished, we've got all the lyrics written out, but what we need is animators. So it's gonna be like one of those animation collabs where a bunch of different artists come together and make a badass video. Now we've only got a few animators so far, so we need a couple more, but it's really cool. There's a link to the song in the description which you can listen to, and then on my Discord server there's a channel dedicated to this project. From there you can see who has what role, which part of the song they're animating, and then what you can do. Once it's finished it'll be released as a video on my channel, and you will be fully credited of course, um, with a little thing next to your name, and in the description and everything. So it's cool, and I'm excited about this project, and it's been going on for a little while now, but I've not announced it. Um, but yeah, it's happening, so get to that if you're an animator who wants to do a cool, creepy thing. 
Windows Movie Maker. Windows Movie Maker was a free software that came preloaded on Microsoft PCs back in the day. When I say the software was primitive, I mean it. On YouTube, there were so many videos that used this software for the editing, and it was really obvious. So even if you didn't use Movie Maker, you could absolutely recognize it since it was really easy to tell when a video was made by it. One of the most iconic parts of Movie Maker was the old fonts and transitions, especially with the blue backgrounds and wet text. Classic. MLG. MLG or Major League Gaming is exactly what it sounds like. On YouTube and the internet in general, there were a lot of parodies of Major League Gaming montages. And they had super loud sound effects and obnoxious memes flashing on screen and all that stuff. The subgenre blew up and was incredibly popular. These montage parodies popularized memes like Shrek, Doritos, the Illuminati, etc. Watching MLG montage parodies nowadays is a painful experience, but back then they were really beloved. Team Fortress. I'm guessing this is referring to Team Fortress 2, which is one of the most popular first-person shooter games out there. The game was released in 2007 and is still incredibly popular and beloved. The game itself is a somewhat silly class-based shooter game with a bunch of really unique characters who people still adore. It has an art style that is somehow just timeless and always looks good. DeviantArt. DeviantArt is an art hosting website where you can basically post whatever you want. There's some really fantastic art and stories on this platform, but it's mostly known for really weird and, like, gross art. And let me tell you, there is quite a lot of it. Lots of people remember this website for a whole myriad of reasons, and, uh, well, that's why it's here. Dragon Tales. Dragon Tales was a cartoon kids show about some kids who lived among dragons. The show was cancelled in 2005, but had reruns for a couple years later, so it's more of an early Gen Z thing. Chocolate Rain. Chocolate Rain is one of the most iconic YouTube videos ever. The video was released by Tay Zon Day in 2007, and the song itself is a commentary on the way that black people are treated in America, which apparently is lost on a lot of people. The video to go along with the song is also just insanely iconic, with Tay moving away from the microphone to breathe in being one of the most memorable parts of it. Chocolate Rain represents a time in YouTube that will never get back, and is fondly remembered by almost everyone who used it. 2012 being the end of the world. So back in the day, people thought that 2012 would be the end of the world, thanks to the calendar the ancient Mayans used, which to us ended in 2012. This spawned a decent amount of panic in people, but was mostly looked at in a light way. But this specifically freaked out kids and introduced an anxiety for the apocalypse. Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet was a series of games on the PlayStation. It featured a very cute little character called Sackboy. As Sackboy, you explored some really cool and unique worlds, including worlds made by other players. Uh, Chris Chan even did his own, uh, whole... No, I'm not gonna mention Chris Chan. Gary's Mod videos. The title says it all. Gary's Mod, the classic Source game, was really popular back in the day, and there were tons of videos about it. Uh, both playing it, just doing wacky things, and just displaying so much, since Gary's Mod was a really versatile game. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon was a series of games where you basically make your own theme park. The game allowed kids to really use their imagination to make crazy and unique theme parks, and the game also allowed you to straight up kill the people who rode your rides. Tons of fun. MS Paint. Microsoft Paint was probably the most iconic preloaded software on Windows PCs. Microsoft Paint was used by so many kids back in the day, and tons of YouTube videos were made using the software, including the iconic SpongeBob Saw series. Portal. Portal was a two-part series of first-person puzzle games that had a really cool gameplay mechanic where you could place portals on any surface and teleport around. The games were really popular, and for good reason, too. Hey everyone, it's me again, and um, I just want to announce something very special. Um, I haven't technically officially announced this yet, but look at this. This is real! Raymundo 2112 plush, and um, it's, at, it's coming out soon. Um, and it is the most adorable thing, and it's so soft and squishy, and his arms are articulated, and so they'll, like, stay wherever you move them. Um, he is so cute. This is such a high-quality plush. Um, you can tell just by looking at it. So this guy is gonna be coming out very soon. Uh, this is just a prototype, but they are in mass production right now, as we speak. And, um, I am so excited for them. So... You might possibly be seeing a little annotation link thingy, wherever it is, I don't know, I think the camera reverses it, in the top corner, leading you to a website where you can buy one. That will probably be for pre-order, if I can do that. Um, but they will be $35 plus shipping. And now this is a pretty big plush, as you can see, next to my head. So it's worth every penny, and it's adorable, and you will not regret the purchase. There will only be 100 made, so, you know, it's limited quantity. Get yours quick. 
Uh, but yeah, such a good plush. He fits in with every other group of little plushies that you've got. He fits in with the creepy ones, he fits in with the cute ones. It's, it's, it's perfect, just like this channel. Yeah, he is so freaking cute. Go ahead, buy one today. Or pre-order one today. Or maybe if you're seeing this later, then it will be available for purchase. But yeah, Little Mundo plushies. Then something else that is for sale as well, which you can buy right now actually, are stickers of the character. Right here, we've got pride flags. We've got him with guns. We got him with a cookie. We got him all these different things in a box. Um, this this is also a shirt design too. Uh, it's a trans pride flag, little box. Super cute little uh, stickers. Um, they're super high quality, uh, perfect for water bottles, uh, and really anywhere you want to stick them. There's a couple on my wall, as you can see, and we've also got a full variety of shirts, and I'm wearing one of those right here. All these designs were made by fans. Um, this right here is a message from the creator of the design of this plush, actually. Hello, my name is Spooky, and I am the designer for the Remondo plush. Blumondo, plush I don't know. I currently have no socials besides Stevie anymore, but I do hope to have more. Much thanks for Ray for using my designs for his merch. Anyway, signing off. But yeah, super cool stuff, and it's all available on that store. So, check it out. You won't regret it. All very high quality stuff. You love it. Shallow Waters. Addicting Games. This entry is likely referring to AddictingGames.com, which was an old Flash game hosting website, not unlike other ones on this list. Of course, this website was visited by tons of kids, since it had a pretty awesome selection of free online games and a large variety of sketchy ads to go along with it. If you remember, you, uh, you remember. It got kind of inappropriate. Blue Bunny Ice Cream. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Blue Bunny is a company who produces some pretty good ice cream. This is here because a lot of kids ate Blue Bunny ice cream growing up, which makes it super nostalgic nowadays. I think their most memorable ice cream was definitely their character pops, with ice cream versions of Sonic the Hedgehog, Batman, Scooby-Doo, the Ninja Turtles, Bugs Bunny, and many, many more. They're such a staple of late 90s and early 2000s, and they're just great. They're pretty hard to find nowadays, being only found in ice cream trucks, so it's always such a treat to find a truck and, well, buy one. Ray William Johnson. Ray William Johnson is a YouTuber best known for his weekly video series Equals 3. Ray was once on top of the website, since his content was really fun and engaging. Equals 3 was essentially the 2000s equivalent to Daily Dose of the Internet, in a sense. On the show, Ray basically just showed a bunch of funny viral clips and made jokes about them. Some of the jokes don't really age too well nowadays, but honestly, I still enjoy re-watching some Equals 3. Ray still makes videos to this day in the form of YouTube Shorts. In these videos, he'll respond to one specific video that's usually a TikTok and make jokes about it pretty similar to the Equals 3 days. He also had a gorilla style band by the name of Your Favorite Martian. This cartoon band was pretty awesome at the time and had some absolute bangers. These are really products of their time and some of them wouldn't really fly today but that's kind of part of their charm in a weird way. Songs like The Stereotype Song, Douchebag, Zombie Love Song, and Orphan Tears are still pretty fun to listen to and the animations to go alongside them are very charming. The Your Favorite Martian YouTube channel sat abandoned after Ray and Maker Studios struck out. So Maker Studios took over and started producing Your Favorite Martian and ended up having a really bad deal with Ray. So he was basically like, screw this, I'm out. And they were like, well, we own your characters, you can't do anything anymore with it. So the name was changed to This Project Is Retired and sat unused for years until October of 2021 when a bunch of old deleted songs were re-uploaded and the profile picture for the channel was restored. Unfortunately, this wasn't a return for the band. In spring of 2022, Your Favorite Martian has been officially returned. Maker Studios is gone, there's no more association with Disney, and they got the old animation studio back. So far while I'm writing this, they've got two sequels to Orphan Tears out, and they're just as good as they used to be. I'm very excited to see your favorite Martian return. I'm, I'm glad to have him back. iDog. The iDog was a series of really cool little iPod speaker dogs. The, the toys would react and move to the music that you played, and just overall had a super cool and futuristic look to them. I personally remember seeing them all over the place, but I never had an iPod growing up, so I never asked for one. Nowadays, looking back at these things brings me right back to the 2000s, in the best of ways. There were tons of different types of iDogs, including different animals, and Spider-Man! So, there was a lot of variety. If you hold the iDog up to today's standards, it's not very impressive, but at the time, this thing was incredibly cool. I miss iPods, so much to the point where I used to have my own iPod 5.5 that barely had any of its original internals, just because they break and I'd replace them. It was a Frankenstein's monster iPod, it was great. I used it on a daily basis and dropped it pretty frequently, but it still survived until one fatal drop. Now I use one by Elite Obsolete Electronics, which I would highly recommend. Not sponsored, but just um, good products. 
Two Girls, One Cup. Alright, so I'm going to be really brief about this one since the subject matter is disgusting and I don't really think anyone wants to learn about it. But of course, if you know, you know. The video was a really popular shock video that made its way around the internet as a challenge of sorts. Basically, you had to watch the video and try not to vomit or turn the video off. I'm gonna mark this as do not research, but I know that you guys are gonna just watch it anyway, but just know that I tried to warn you. Don't watch this video, it's just, <laughs> it's straight up disgusting. You don't gain anything by watching it. it. Well, I guess the only thing that you would gain is, is a bunch of awful memories, but nothing good. So, just don't. Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock was a really cute cartoon that started airing in 1973, but had multiple iterations throughout the years. The show was set to teach kids grammar in a fun and engaging way, and did exactly that. This is a very cross-generational nostalgic thing since it aired for so many years. Battle for Dream Island Battle for Dream Island, or BFGI, is a series of cartoons on YouTube that featured a bunch of anthropomorphic inanimate items that battled each other for a luxurious place known as Dream Island. There are a ton of episodes and seasons of this show, and it got a massive fandom. The show came out in 2010, but was cancelled in 2013, only to be brought back later. This was one of those fandoms that was just kind of unavoidable, since there was a ton of fan art and just general love for the show throughout the internet. I remember always seeing people with profile pictures of the characters back in like 2013, 2014, and it's very nostalgic to see them again nowadays. Super Mario Logan. Super Mario Logan, otherwise known as SML, was a YouTube series where kids basically just played with Mario plushies and made bizarre and edgy stories with them. I'm gonna piss off a lot of people watching this, but I really didn't like this show back in the day, and I still don't really see the appeal, but I do remember seeing it around quite a lot. Mario plush videos in general were really popular back in the day and are really nostalgic nowadays, and Super Mario Logan was one of these Mario plush channels. Super Mario Logan had to be changed recently because Nintendo sued the creators of it for featuring Mario in the way that they did, which I think is pretty hilarious. Tourette's Guy The Tourette's Guy was a mockumentary web series featuring a middle-aged alcoholic man who suffered from Tourette's. The series used his condition for comedic value and a lot of his videos have kind of lived on in meme culture to this day. The man, Danny, actually did have Tourette's, but kind of acted it up for comedic value. There are rumors that Danny passed away, but people are still kind of unsure about this. Spencer's Spencer's is a chain of stores formerly known as Spencer's Gifts. The name will make you think that it's one of those boring clothing stores that your mom would take you to, but it's actually the complete opposite. It's kind of like Hot Topic, but like X-rated. It has your average alt-emo stuff, including t-shirts and random merchandise, but they also have things like lava lamps and Halloween frankincense. Yeah, and then there's also the back. If you know, you know. Long story short, the back of every Spencer's store gets inappropriate, and if you're a kid, uh, don't go into the back. Uh, or don't really go to Spencer's at all. Um, but of course, that's up to you. Marble Hornets. Marble Hornets was an ARG-style found footage series on YouTube based on the concept of Slenderman. Unlike most creepypasta-related things, these videos were genuinely pretty cool and pretty creepy. The series freaked the hell out of a lot of kids back in the day, and a lot of them thought it was indeed real footage of Slenderman. Tobuscus Tobuscus was a YouTuber who made Let's Plays, Vlogs, and most infamously, songs. His channel was massive and watched by thousands of kids, despite his content being a little inappropriate for some. Tobuscus' legacy has kind of been ruined after an ex-girlfriend accused him of doing some really, really awful things, but a lot of his songs and videos still live on in the memories of Gen Z children all across the world. Zaboomafoo Zaboomafu was a live-action, animation-mixed kids show that aired from 1999 to 2001. The show featured the Krat Brothers and a lemur named Jovian. The show was really, really beloved by kids at the time and educated them on wildlife while keeping them solidly entertained. Moshi Monsters Ah, uh, yeah, this one hits close to home. Moshi Monsters was an online kids game where you could control cute little monsters that you could customize and take care of. The world of Moshi Monsters was one of creativity and joy for so many kids. Moshi Monsters was one of the more engaging games of the style, having a membership where kids uh, could become super Moshis and go on these superhero themed adventures that ended up changing the story of the game and would affect the map. Of course, the membership was paid and paid for by parents. There was also stuff like the ice cream game, which if you played Moshi Monsters, you know how good that little minigame was. Moshi Monsters had this really smart gimmick where you could adopt these little pets named Moshlings, both in the game and at your local toy store. The game had some controversy when Lady Gaga sued them for having a Moshling character named Lady Goo Goo, who was, you know, obviously a parody of her. I remember Lady Goo Goo being my favorite, favorite Moshi Monsters character as a kid, so hearing about this and seeing the Moshling get replaced was incredibly upsetting to an 8-year-old me. 
Moshi Monsters branched out into a DS game and also a movie, which is apparently not very good. Unfortunately though, in December of 2019, Moshi Monsters was shut down for good since Adobe was discontinuing support of Flash. The game had a great life and made many, many kids very happy. Like Club Penguin, fans did recompile the game, so you can now play Moshi Monsters rewritten for free. Logo Quiz Game This entry is pretty self-explanatory. Logo quizzes were simple little games where you could see a logo, then type out what you thought it was. These were either just Flash games, or, you know, somewhere on Roblox or other websites. Pretty simple, but, you know, a good source of childhood memories. Fancy Pants Adventures Fancy Pants Adventures is a classic Newgrounds Flash game, and it's really one of the best out there. The game is genuinely good, it was a fast-paced platformer with really smooth animation and tight controls. I remember seeing a lot of kids playing this like at the library on the computers that they had there, and always thinking it just looked awesome, but never actually playing it. Castle Crashers Castle Crashers was a Newgrounds Flash game that was actually really good. So good to the point where you can actually buy modern versions of the game on the Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. The art style is very Newgrounds, and the character designs are very cute and memorable. These characters have come back in recent times thanks to Friday Night Funkin', I think in mods, or they're officially in the game. If you couldn't tell, I don't know much about Friday Night Funkin', but they're in there somewhere, so, uh, you know, kids of Gen Alpha are now also probably fans of the characters. AMVs. This entry is referring to anime music videos, which is often just shortened to AMVs. So, these anime music videos were incredibly cringe and silly, and that's what made them special. They were essentially different clips from anime shows with rainbow filters and loud compressed music in the background. They were all over YouTube back in the day since the people who made them genuinely thought they were the coolest thing. Seeing an unironic AMV brings back so many memories for me and many memories for many others. America's Funniest Home Videos America's Funniest Home Videos or AFV was a TV show that displayed a bunch of funny home videos that people sent in. At the end of the episode, the audience would vote for which video they thought was the funniest. I loved this show so much as a kid. The host, Dom Bergeron, always was really charming and had some great commentary. I would just sit there and laugh my organs out to all the funny clips of people falling. Good stuff. A and I think this show permanently ruined my sense of humor because, like, people falling over is really funny to me. Especially kids falling over, like that whole subreddit for it. That's what gets me. And I'm wondering if I never watched America's Funny Home Videos, would I be the same way? But, uh, I guess the world will never know. Brain Pop. Brain Pop was an educational website that hosted little Flash cartoons that were, well, educational. But here's the thing, they were really fun. There were a couple of characters, but most memorable of which were Tim and Moby, a teenage boy and an orange robot. Surprisingly enough, Brain Pop is still around to this day and is super classic. Great, great stuff. I'd recommend looking back at some of the old videos because they are incredibly nostalgic. The animation is so retro in early 2000s, but also you might learn something. Yo Mama. I'm sure you've all heard of Yo Mama jokes in the past, but this entry is likely referring to the Yo Mama YouTube channel, which was very, very popular, and many, many kids were big into all these videos. Some of the jokes weren't exactly appropriate, but that was kind of the appeal. I remember being at a local burger joint with a friend, just recounting Yo Mama jokes that we'd seen on the channel while thinking it was the funniest thing out there. Good memories. Lisa Frank. Lisa Frank was a brand of school supplies and clothing that had a really bright and colorful art style that radiated the 90s and early 2000s. The art in these products is just really nice to look at and gives such strong feelings of childhood memories, despite me not really owning or using any of the clothes or school supplies. There's just something really special about it, I don't know. Tell me if you guys agree in the comments, because this art just feels like very childhood-esque, and I'm sure that's the point, but there's... they did it right. For Dummies For Dummies is a book series that basically will explain things in a way that is simple and easy to understand, since usually the concepts being explained are very hard to grasp, especially in the way that you usually present it in a strictly educational sense. For Dummies helps simplify things and makes things less intimidating by presenting everything in a casual, lighthearted way. These were super popular in the 90s and early 2000s, so that's why they're here. Castle Miner Z Castle Miner Z was a Minecraft knockoff, but what made it stand out was its use of guns and zombies. Nothing too special, but it was kind of popular, which is why it's here. Chicken Little Chicken Little was a 2005 Disney CGI movie that retold the original Chicken Little story, only this time he's actually right about the sky falling. It turns out that the sky is actually part of an alien mothership that lands down and hits him. The movie is wild, and I personally love it. The movie is kind of one that is divisive to a lot of people, but I've always really enjoyed it just for the sheer bizarreness of all of it. The animation and the soundtrack alongside it are dated 
and the references are dated, and I don't know, it's it's a very nostalgic movie. Chugga Conroy. Chugga Conroy was a Let's Player that was very popular back in the early 2010s. Something that was special about his channel was the man behind it all. His personality is what made his videos entertaining and memorable. I personally remember watching his Luigi's Mansion Let's Play and I really, really loved it. I would wake up and watch an episode of it since I really wanted to play Luigi's Mansion, but I didn't actually have it. Claw Machines. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Claw Machines to a kid were the most exciting thing. I personally remember getting my first win on a claw machine in Mexico when I was like two or so, and since then I have loved them. An old themed restaurant by the name of Mars2112 had a claw machine that had a really, really strong grip, and you could adjust it as it dropped, so it was really easy to win. I have many plush toys from that claw machine. Very, very good memories. College Humor College Humor is a YouTube channel that made a lot of the site's most popular videos. They had live-action skits and animated videos that were a lot of fun. A lot of them were a bit inappropriate, for kids at least, but that didn't stop kids from watching them. They still make YouTube videos and actually have a streaming service alongside a TV show, so they were still going strong. Coraline Coraline is a stop-motion animation movie that was based off a book by the same name. Coraline was really, really unique to say the very least. The movie was kind of terrifying to a lot of kids, and had some horrific themes and imagery. For a lot of kids, it was the first horror-style movie they saw, which makes it very nostalgic for some people. It's a great movie, too. Um, but yeah, if you're younger, you probably shouldn't watch it. There's a reason that it was on the childhood trauma iceberg. Raw Dahl. Raw Dahl was the author of some of the most famous and iconic children's books of all time. At this point, I feel like there's no way you haven't heard of at least some of his work. Raw Dahl was the author of books like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, The Big Friendly Giant, James and the Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and many, many more. His books are genuinely great, and they made me really happy as a kid. Also, did anyone know there's actually a sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, it's a sci-fi space novel about Charlie, Grandpa Joe, and Willy Wonka in the glass elevator picking up where the last book ended. The story turns into sort of a survival horror story with these green aliens that our main characters have to fight off and escape while in space. It's really weird, but I personally enjoyed it back in the day, despite it being kind of scary at times. But yeah, Fur Affinity. Fur Affinity is a website devoted to hosting furry art. A lot of it is not safe for work. The dress. <laughs> We're just gonna. That's so funny. We're just Fur Affinity is like a sentence, if that. The dress. What color is this dress? Is it white and gold or black and blue? Well, in 2015, the internet asked itself that very question, and there was a lot of debate on both sides. I've never once seen it as anything but blue and black, but some people swear otherwise. Turns out the dress is indeed blue and black, so those who see it like that are technically right. For the people who see white and gold, it's actually more of an optical illusion. So I ask you all, what color is this dress? Leave what you see in the comments below. I don't know if we're gonna bring back this uh, this whole dress thing, but yeah, I, I'm genuinely curious. I've never once seen it as anything but blue and black. Purple Place. Purple Place was a game that was pre-installed on Windows Vista and Windows 7. The game was cute and simple, featuring a variety of mini-games to be played. This home screen here is something of a liminal space for a lot of people. But regardless of this, the game is super nostalgic for kids who grew up using Windows 7 and Windows Vista. Cyber Chase Cyber Chase was an animated TV show that aired on PBS Kids back in the 2000s. The show centered around a the show centered around a group of kids who were transported to cyberspace after using a school computer. The setting of the show was always really unique since everything was all computery and futuristic. My local hall of science had a room themed to the show for a little while, which I was pretty into as a kid. Syriac Syriac is a YouTube channel that specializes in making strange, bizarre, and oddly terrifying videos. I feel like most kids that used the internet back in the early 2010s probably saw some of his stuff and were freaked out by it. Videos like Mao and Boogie Math scared a lot of kids, and they ended up going into the childhood trauma iceberg, bringing that back up. A lot of this kind of is interchangeable. Syriac is still somewhat active nowadays, so I imagine this could be kind of something relatable to kids in the next generation. Pillow Pets Pillow Pets was a line of plush toys slash pillows that you could fold with some Velcro to change them from a toy to a pillow. This line of toys had commercials that would often play on the Hub Network back in the day. I personally had a pillow pet back in the day and used it for years until it kind of fell apart. Domo. Domo is the official mascot of Japan's public broadcaster, NHK. The character made its way to the United States and ended up getting some merchandise. The character featured in some really cute and charming stop motions and eventually became popular with scene kids. I remember Halloween of 2008, Domo had completely taken over my local Target and I was so into it. I loved it. I think you do. Oh, I 
<laughs> Dork Diaries. Dork Diaries was the series of books that was essentially the girl version of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I never read it because I'm a big boy and big boys only read Big Nate. Um, and of course, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. But Dork Diaries was always really popular. I remember having friends that would bring the books over and just seeing them in the library next to the superior Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Ed's World. Ed's World was an animated series on Newgrounds that started in 2004 and was beloved by so many people. The show was on top of Newgrounds and garnered a massive audience. I remember seeing the show everywhere and people loved it. The creator of it unfortunately passed away in 2012, leaving tons of fans crushed. The outpour of support and love after these events is truly heartwarming. Elf. Elf is a 2003 hit film featuring Will Ferrell. The movie is about a human who grew up in the North Pole and worked as an elf for his entire life, leading him to think he was just a massive elf, until learning that he's actually a human, and then he travels to New York City to find his father, and hilarity ensues. The film is truly great, and, well, I mean, the first, like, three quarters of it are. The end isn't great, but regardless, this movie's a total classic. Probably one of the best Christmas movies out there. Obviously, this movie's super nostalgic to those who watched it back in the day, and still watch it to this day. Microsoft Flight Simulator Microsoft Flight Simulator is a game that originally released in 2006, but has been getting sequels and updates to this day. The game's a realistic flight simulator that lets you fly through different recreations of places on Earth. The game can be pretty calm and tranquil, and is really just a display of the realism at play. The game nowadays uses satellite data on where you're flying, so for example, if you're flying around New York in the game and it's raining in New York in real life, it'll be raining in the game, which I think is pretty cool. Microsoft Flight Simulator's older versions are also very charming and a lot more primitive, but lots of people grew up with them, and that's why they're here. Scribblenauts Scribblenauts was a really unique series of video games where you could basically type anything you wanted and it would show up in the game. It'd be presented by a puzzle which you then had to creatively solve with whatever you could think of. The game was really unique, it really let its players truly be creative puzzle solvers since there were tons of different ways that you could solve these puzzles. LMFAO LMFAO is an electric music duo who you might not know by name, but you definitely know by their music. Songs like I'm Sexy and I Know It, Party Rock Anthem, and Shots are incredibly iconic early 2010 songs that the majority of Gen Z children probably used to sing. Whether you like the song, or you just had the song stuck in your head, you remember these guys. Fuhi Cooley School Supplies Back in the 2000s, we had Fuhi Cooley School Supplies, which was a brand that was super fun. The mascot was a derpy little monkey that would appear on some pencil toppers and erasers. They also had scented erasers alongside pencil sharpeners. These products were just pure fun and are incredibly nostalgic to those who went to school from 2005 to 2012. Empire Today. Here, just watch this. 800-588-2300 Empire Today. Need I say more? Pop Tropica. Pop Tropica is an online children's RPG created by none other than Jeff Kinney. Yeah, that's the creator of the Diary of Wumpy Kid books. The game was pretty popular with kids and has a pretty recognizable art style. Pop Tropica has many different islands that you could visit, some being themed off of Jeff Kinney's books. Whenever a new Wimpy Kid book released, you would most likely find promotions for it on Pop Tropica. Many children grew up with this game and fondly remember it to this day. Luckily, it's still playable, so if you want to go back and relive your childhood, you can. Mike Mozart. Mike Mozart was one of the original big YouTubers back in the early days of the site. Mike was a toy designer, and so he started off a channel by the name of Jeepers Media, where he took a look at toys that he deemed fails. These videos were incredibly entertaining, both because Mike has a very endearing and funny personality, but also because the toys he took a look at were often just kind of crazy and outrageous. Mike claimed the catchphrase, I mean really, what were they thinking? His videos continued to become more and more popular, and so he decided to make a second channel by the name of The Toy Channel. The Toy Channel focused on good toys, and the reviews were generally more short form. The thing about Mike Mozart that made his content good is that he wasn't pandering to children making these videos. The videos were, at times, a bit inappropriate for children, Peter Griffin, with some adult jokes and light swearing in some, but this didn't stop children from watching his videos. I personally grew up with Mike Mozart, and he was one of my favorite YouTubers out there. Mike continued to make videos both on the Toy Channel and Jeepers Media until around 2013, where out of nowhere he just completely stopped uploading, with his final video being about Cars-themed Easter toys. Many people think that Mike passed away, and that's why he stopped, but fortunately, that's far from the truth. Mike Mozart's not only a YouTuber, toy designer, and voice actor, but he's also an incredible street artist. His work is incredibly cool, and I highly recommend you check it out. Mike Mozart has stayed active on both Instagram and Twitter for years now. Throughout the past few years, Mike has returned to the Toy Channel and done some live streams to update people on his life, and of course, to interact with his fans. Within the time that Mike was off the internet, he actually put a lot of work into himself, and really into his health. 
He did the keto diet and lost a ton of weight. This drastically changed his voice and his appearance. I'm sending this Halloween message to let everyone know my voice appeared in hundreds of animated Halloween toys for decades. All the open market stuff that you got from China that said, Happy Halloween, or door knocker would say, Trick or treat, or go away. Nowadays, Mike looks better than ever and has a badass deep voice. There's a documentary in the making about his life that will appear on streaming soon, so be sure to check that out to learn more. Mike Mozart was a big part of mine and many other Gen Z kids' childhood, so I'm happy to talk about him here. Also, he follows me on Twitter, so that's awesome. Ronald McDonald Insanity. Ronald McDonald Insanity is a classic viral video from YouTube of a remixed Japanese McDonald's commercial using clips of Ronald being silly to the song Un Owen Was Her. The video is an absolute classic and was viewed by many Gen Z children, and it now stands as a video that's part of all of our collective forgotten memories. Angry German Kid. Angry German Kid was a video of a German boy playing the Unreal Tournament and getting really, really angry at the game. His video blew up and was watched by millions. The video is acted, the kid isn't actually raging through it, but not many people knew that. This video was one of those classic viral videos that was all over YouTube. Many videos were made parodying it and it basically became a meme. A lot of the time, the kid was being made fun of. It was essentially a meme format with people adding subtitles for whatever context the meme was trying to provide. So let's say he'd be angry about a new movie coming out, they'd show clips from the movie and then clips of the boy screaming with subtitles, basically saying what he's angry about. Unfortunately, the video blowing up kinda ruined the guy's life, since he was so directly tied to it. He claims that he eventually went crazy from relentless bullying, which led him to intimidate his classmates and drunkenly announce a potential killing spree at his school. This resulted in him being expelled and serving a month in prison. Nowadays, he's a bodybuilder and a rapper, and has a channel on YouTube where he shows off his physique and his music. Baby Einstein Baby Einstein was a children's edutainment brand from the late 90s and early 2000s that specialized in a variety of products such as CDs, DVDs, toys, books, etc. I personally grew up with this brand when I was a little kid, and looking back on it nowadays, it's very nostalgic. At the time, some said that Baby Einstein was actually slowing development in children, which I did not know until now. Whether or not it actually had a negative effect on Gen Z kids can't really be determined, but like, maybe? Habbo Hotel. Habbo Hotel was an online game that was marketed as a hangout for teens and young adults. It was one of the first of its time and had a decent following. The game really blew up after being targeted on 4chan. 4chan users trolled the website, all dressing in the same outfit and blocking the entrance to the pool. They were stingrays with AIDS in the pool. From there, the catchphrase, pools closed, skyrocketed and bled its way into the real world. Go Animate. Go Animate was an online quote unquote animation software where you could basically drag and drop little characters onto a background and use text to speech tools to make them say whatever you wanted. To be clear, there was no actual animation that you would do, everything was just pre recorded animations that you would drag and drop onto the characters. Go Animate videos were huge back in the day, and a weird subgenre of them spawned. This being random characters getting grounded for doing something bad. It started off simple with a character like Caillou going to Chuck E. Cheese without his parents' permission, but then became really, really bizarre. I personally was a Go Animate user myself and made some pretty bizarre videos. No! It's you from that terrible show! We already know how to be beautiful! We've watched it once or twice. You turned that man with the red shirt into a big muscle man guy. <laughs> No, you are terrible. Here is a potion that makes you handsome. I got this. You're grounded for two trillion years. That was crazy, dude. Go Animate shut down and was changed to Beyond, and it had a much more professional look. It's advertised towards companies who need cheap, fast animated videos for brands. They've distanced themselves from these old Family Guy style characters for a much more bland and corporate look. That 19. Vat19 is an online shopping website which was created by a man named Jamie Salvatore all the way back in 2000. They specialize in curiously awesome products of all sorts. They started a YouTube channel in 2007 and made videos showing off the products that they sold in very entertaining and fun videos. After a while, 
There was a crew of Vat19 employees who all featured in their videos and advertisements. They all ended up becoming recognizable. As a little kid, I was a massive fan of all things Vat19, and I watched all their videos religiously. They actually still make videos to this day, and all their classic stuff is still up if you want to revisit them and check it out. Junie B. Jones Junie B. Jones was a children's novel series about a little girl named Junie. There were 28 books in the series, and they focused on Junie's experiences in kindergarten and first grade. These books were read by many children back in the 2000s, so that's why it's on here. Light versions of mobile games so back when mobile games weren't just made to squeeze as much money out of the consumer as possible, the games were actually really similar to how console or PC games were. As in, they had a set price that you'd pay one time and then be able to access the full game. However, they would provide free versions of these games, usually labeled as light versions. These were essentially demos of the games that gave you a free taste of the full game. I personally much prefer this version of doing mobile games. I personally much prefer this version of doing mobile games. VTech. VTech is a company that makes products for kids, and most notably their mini laptops from the 2000s. They made a lot of toys that sort of resembled popular gaming consoles at the time, but only with the VTech toys they were made educational in some way. I remember seeing my friends with these toys back in the day, and so seeing pictures of them is so nostalgic, it brings me right back. Reply Girls In the early days of YouTube, there was essentially a feature where people would make reply videos to the more popular videos on the platform. A lot of the time, people making these replies would be attractive women with their boobies out. The reply videos would end up appearing next to the actual viral videos, so many people would end up seeing them. Their boobies were out in the thumbnails, so lots of people would click. Uh, people quickly started to despise Reply Girls since they found their videos to be incredibly lazy and just kind of gamey. After a while, the way that YouTube worked changed, effectively eliminating the Reply Girls from being viable. Gerber grow up playing commercial. Here, just watch this. Attention parents and grandparents of young children. Gerber Life is accepting applications for their affordable Grow Up Plan. The Grow Up Plan gives your child $10,000 in whole life insurance protection now, <laughs> then doubles automatically to $20,000 later at no extra cost. Free information will be sent to parents and grandparents who call now. Help give your child a head start for just pennies a day. Don't wait. Call now for free information. Call 1-800-829-8866. Call now. This ad would play very, very frequently on channels like Nick Jr., Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and Boomerang. This commercial is so nostalgic to watch nowadays. I feel like a lot of kids didn't like it much at the time, just considering how often it would play, but at this point, me and many others look back very fondly. Mad Cartoon Network. Mad was a TV show that was basically a kids, a kids and teen friendly version of Robot Chicken. Mad parodied many, many popular kid-friendly IPs, some of which being really funny and silly, and others being terrifying and traumatizing. Not a problem for SpongeWow! <laughs> Speak for yourself, it's burning! Yeah, for some reason, Mad really didn't hold back in a lot of ways, leading to some very, very memorable moments for a lot of kids. For better or for worse. I feel fantastic. I Feel Fantastic is a very bizarre old YouTube video displaying a robot woman singing about how fantastic she feels. The video alone is one that makes many people feel a lot of different ways. Some think it's a very funny video while others think it's terrifying while some are more in the middle. Unfortunately I can't play the audio since as of late it's been copyrighted but you can still watch the original. This video has got some myths and legends around it as well. Some think that this video was created by a serial killer and the reason the robot sings about feeling fantastic fantastic is because that's what the killer wished his victims would say while he killed them. The clothes on the robot would be that of the victims, according to the story. Obviously this isn't true and this video is just a weird art project, but it's still fun to think about. Hungry Pumpkin. This entry is referring to an old Flash website, which was essentially an education tool to help people learn English. The website blew up because of its silly nature and bizarre visuals. The most popular part of this website was the Hungry Pumpkin. There was a pumpkin man that would walk in and ask you to give him food. You'd then give him whatever you wanted and he would eat it. If you didn't give him the food, he would get mad and throw the food. This game kind of blew up back in meme culture in the early 2010s and I personally found it really funny at the time. Hell, I even made a video of myself playing the game. Unfortunately, the game's not around anymore since the Adobe Flash player is no longer supported, but you can still play it in the Flash archive. Mugen. This is a game engine responsible for those awesome crossover fights that you'd see on YouTube. You'd see characters like Ronald McDonald fighting Peter Griffin, or Goku vs Rainbow Dash, or something like that, so on and so forth. This game was essentially the ultimate crossover, and it was always really fun to see battles since they were usually really similar to the source material, and the people who developed these characters did a really good job most of the time. Jib Jab. Jib Jab is a website that was created in 1999. 
At first, it was just a way to make funny digital postcards. It was relatively obscure until 2004, when they parodied the presidential election, which blew up and made them way more popular. They continued to make videos parodying politics alongside other non-political postcard videos. They were really popular, especially during the Christmas seasons, and people loved turning themselves into elves and uh, watching them dance, I guess. They started a video series called Year in Review, which was basically a song parody of the past year. These videos were really popular on YouTube, and they continued to be made for a while. The platform continued to grow and grow more and more until around 2012 when they started to plateau and started to fall off a bit. But the website has stayed online this entire time. In 2020, they did their first year in review video since 2012. I personally used Jib Jab a lot back in the 2000s and I really, really enjoyed it. The Halloween ones were my favorite. Mr. Six commercials. The century is referring to the very popular Six Flags commercials featuring the funny little old man. These commercials were very popular back in the day, so that's why it's here. Ben Weevils. Ben Weevils was a British MMORPG similar to Moshi Monsters or Club Penguin. The game was released in 2007 and got a decent player base. The game was brought back into the public eye by the YouTuber Mimulus back in 2017. Since then, the game has been shut down due to the fact that Flash is no longer supported. Town of Salem. Town of Salem is an online browser game centered around the Salem Witch Trials. The gameplay is similar to that of something like Mafia. Players who were assigned the evil role would attack the good ones, and people with the good role would protect the living. Once a player is found out to be evil, they are lynched, and their roles are revealed. The game came out in 2014, and is still running to this day. Scary Logos this entry is referring to logos of different companies that would play before or after a TV show or something along those lines. Notable examples are Vid and Classic Tree. Chad Warden. Sub, this is Chad Warden here. Alright, I'm talking about that PS Triple. The PS Triple. I ain't talking about that Wii. That Wii? Yeah, people, people will be talking about how it's all. No, right. but you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say is that... Come on. Chad Warden was an online character created and portrayed by Anthony Pinto. He made his first video in 2007 where he talks about how much better the PS3 is over the Wii. His main thing is to call the PS3 the PS Triple. That's basically his catchphrase. Chad was a troll and was making these videos to get a reaction out of people, since the things he was saying were very inflammatory. People fell hook, line, and sinker for it back in the day, but nowadays people look back fondly on his videos. Little People. Little People is a brand of children's toys that have been around since 1959. The toys were pretty popular back in the 2000s, meaning a lot of Gen Z kids had them growing up, including me. They had a variety of toys alongside some stop-motion TV specials, which are incredibly nostalgic nowadays. The toys are being made to this day, but have been slightly redesigned to make them more modern looking. Raka Raka. Raka Raka is a YouTube channel that specializes in making really violent and shocking videos. They really blew up after making some videos featuring Ronald McDonald. These videos were really disturbing to kids back in the day, since they usually didn't start disturbing, so you'd be in a false sense of security to what feels like a normal funny video, and then it all just goes crazy. I personally was not a fan of Raka Raka as a kid, since their videos really disturbed me. It got to the point where I'd write Raka Raka on a piece of paper and shoot it with a Nerf gun to alleviate the stress that the videos gave me. Emp Lemon. Emp Lemon or Emperor Lemon is a YouTuber who created many, many famous YouTube poops back in the day, many of which are fondly remembered by people. He still makes videos to this day, but they are more so in the form of video essays and they're genuinely really good. He's taken down a lot of his older YouTube poop videos, but you can still find them otherwise. Redneck Rampage Redneck Rampage is the 1997 MS-DOS first person shooter where you play as a redneck and run around town shooting things, and you curse. The game's very violent and edgy, and I'm not going to talk about it too much more, uh, but if you remember it, you remember it. Blood, 97. Blood is another MS-DOS first-person shooter game where you run around and shoot bad guys. I don't want to risk anything, like with the last entry, but it's here. Bottom of the Ice. Zany Brainy. Zany Brainy was a chain of retail stores that were centered around selling fun educational toys. Zany Brainy started in 1991, but closed all of its stores in 2003. The look of these stores are incredibly nostalgic, and many people remember this place and miss it. It actually made a return in 2020, but only in the form of an online store, where they basically just sold Zany Brainy merchandise. So if you want to kind of relive your Zany Brainy memories, you can. Kind of. Ladder code. <laughs> 
<laughs> this entry is referring to an old YouTube video showing a guy playing a video game. He sees a goat walking by, the goat then goes up a ladder, and the animation just completely bugs out. Which leaves the guy laughing hysterically for the rest of the video. There is then a video released of a real life goat climbing up a ladder with the audio from the original video playing in the background. Alien Myth 64 Alien Myth 64 is a YouTube channel that used to specialize in making YouTube poops that were very popular back in the day. Some of the older videos on this channel have been taken down, but if you visit nowadays you can still see a good chunk of them. Nowadays, the channel is still somewhat active with a series named Emo Bob's Slaughter Pants. The series kind of blew up in 2021 with the video Emo Bob Works at Taco Bell. My culture is not your costume. Pez Stop Motion Animations. Ah, uh, this one really brings me back. Adam Pezapane, otherwise known as Pez, is an animator and director who created a YouTube channel where he uploaded extremely satisfying, cool stop motion videos. They genuinely hold up really, really well and they're extremely satisfying. If you haven't seen the videos or haven't seen them in a long time, I highly recommend you check it out. The stop motion videos essentially consist of a guy making food out of inedible objects. It's weird to explain, but once you see it, you'll get it. Nico Nico Doga. Nico Nico was a Japanese video sharing website with this little box TV mascot. Nico Nico being a Japanese term meaning to laugh or to smile. The term Doga denotes to videos or movies. On YouTube, you could find a ton of Nico Nico Doga videos, which a lot of the time were funny versions of anime openings or Vocaloid songs. Evil Elmo and Evil Barney. Ah yeah, this one really brings me back. Back in the early days of YouTube, there were a ton of videos portraying Barney and Elmo being evil. These videos were usually made in MS Paint, and they were very unique to say the least. I don't know why there was such a fascination with these characters being evil, but there was. There's also an iconic video by the name of The Story of Evil Elmo, which is an incredible video. It was scary at the time, but nowadays it's hilarious. It truly is comedy heaven, alongside the Evil Barney videos as well. RPG Maker RPG Maker is a software that you can use to make your very own RPG. It's in the name. Many, many games have been made using RPG Maker of various levels of quality. G Major Effects Videos Remember those old videos that weren't much more than a popular video with the sound through G Majors and the visuals through an inverted filter? Well, that's what this is referring to. I'm not sure exactly why these videos were so popular, but hey, I can't judge. Bootleg Video Games Back in the 2000s, bootleg video games ran rampant. Usually being cartridge based, these wacky bootleg games were often direct knockoffs of popular video games, often Nintendo ones. This could also be referring to bootleg cartridges of Game Boy games, for example. These were pretty much just fake versions of actual games. Pico School. Pico School was a flash game on Newgrounds created by Tom Fulp all the way back in 1999. The game has you play as the titular Pico, defending yourself from goth kids who are attacking your school. The game is super violent and is about a very, very touchy subject matter. The game was very popular on Newgrounds and was one of the first games ever. It has multiple sequels and even has an entire day devoted to it by Newgrounds. The character has skyrocketed in popularity since his inclusion in Friday Night Funkin', meaning Pico is going to be something that is both nostalgic to millennials, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha all at once. Tasty Planet Tasty Planet is a video game where you start off as a tiny little microscopic blob, eating everything in sight. You start off with just specks of dust to crumbs, and eventually growing to the point where you are eating planets. 25 Ways to Kill Yoshi 25 Ways to Kill Yoshi is a super classic YouTube video showing a Yoshi plush getting killed in 25 different ways. The video to this day is incredibly iconic and entertaining, and it still holds up. The video is created by a YouTuber by the name of Shoney Boy, who is actually an incredibly nice guy. He's made sequels to the Yoshi video, and I'd highly suggest that you check his stuff out. Zula Patrol Zula Patrol was a TV show from 2005. The show featured a group of aliens going to a bunch of different planets and having adventures on them, while also being an educational show. I loved this show growing up so much. As you can probably tell, I've got a deep love for aliens, so this show was just perfect. It was pretty obscure, all things considered, and I'm gonna wonder how many of you actually recognize this. If you remember Zula Patrol, please tell me in the comments, because you're, you're one of the few. The show was cancelled in 2008, but continued to air after that. There was also a game to go along with it. Zula Patrol had an MMORPG sort of game by the name of Zula World, and this game was the shit. I remember playing this game when I was a little kid and I loved it. They had a membership system similar to Club Penguin, where there was little pet creatures that you could take care of that would actually just die if you neglected them, which was 
intense, but realistic, I guess. The game was really fun and featured a bunch of different little mini-games inside of it. There really isn't a lot of footage to go along with it, unfortunately. A lot of it is lost media. The game was shut down around 2014, and since it's not too popular, no one really did much work to archive it. Zula World was really good, especially just considering the fact that it was based on an obscure TV show that wasn't that popular. I've got so many memories with this game. And honestly, I'd love to see it rewritten in the same way that Club Penguin and Moshi Monsters have been. Whether or not that'll actually happen is unlikely, but hey, we can dream. Crush on Boxy. So this entry is pretty specific, but if you know, you know. Back in the early days of YouTube, there was a user by the name of Boxy Babe. Originally, her videos were just saying hello to her online friends. This was just a 16-year-old girl who decided to upload herself on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Boxy. Most of you know me as, um, uh, well, no, most of you know me as Boxy, I suppose. If you're watching this, you probably... During the Pokemon boom of 1999, Burger King released a series of toys with their kids menu, which were plastic Pokeballs that you would open up and find a Pokemon inside. The toys were incredibly popular, and kids loved them. Everything was good, and the products were bringing a lot of joy to children and lots of profit to Burger King. However, unfortunately the story ends in tragedy. Reports had come out that a baby had suffocated on one of these, and since the baby had put the ball over its mouth, it got stuck. The balls didn't have any ventilation holes, so there was no breathing through it. On December 27th of 1999, Burger King set to recall over 25 million Pokeballs, and offered people a small fry if they returned their Pokeball to a restaurant. Burger King aired a recall advertisement to alert people to the situation. Here's that ad. Burger King and the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission want you to know about the voluntary recall of this Pokemon Pokeball. The ball may pose a suffocation hazard to children under three. Throw the ball away or return it to Burger King. The safety of your child is of the utmost importance to us. There's something so unnerving about that video. The framing of the toy, the text, the narration, the analog effect to it, the lighting, all of it. It just really serves to make it a really unnerving video. Regardless, some early Gen Z kids may remember this commercial on TV from when they were little kids or otherwise they watched it on YouTube. This recall video has inspired people to make videos paying homage to it and really playing on the scary aspect of it all. Nowadays, whenever you see a Pokeball toy that opens up into two halves, there's always ventilation holes. 
Pawn and Z. Pawn and Z was a webcomic from the early 2000s that featured two little colorful characters in a variety of situations, the majority of them being love-based. The comics were first uploaded to DeviantArt in 2004, and through the 2000s found widespread use in the emo and scene cultures. If you were on MySpace back in the day, there was a high chance that you'd come across one of these comics. What I believe the most popular this to be was the I Made You a Cookie, But I Eat It comic. These comics are still sometimes referenced and parodied to this day, with it living in the deep recesses of people's minds. Pod and Z had this beautifully emo yet cute theme where it would mix like horror but also like adorable imagery at the same time. It was really, really great. Uh, if you want to learn more about Pod and Z, you're actually in luck because I've got an entire video covering the history of the comic and unboxing some of the newer prints. It's a great video and definitely one of my more underrated ones, so give it a watch. Gustav. Gustopher Yellow Gold was a children's music project from back in the 2000s. The main character of the project was Gustopher Yellow Gold, a creature from the sun with a pet eel. This is definitely one of the more obscure entries on this iceberg, on account of the fact that it was pretty obscure just generally when it was a thing. Gustopher had DVDs with cute little animated music videos that just had this otherworldly feel to them. They personally just made me feel so strange as a kid. Don't get me wrong, I, I love them, but there was just something about the art style and the way everything looked and moved that was just like weird in the most wonderful way. Gustopher Yellow Gold had live performances, which you can actually still watch on YouTube alongside all the songs and music videos. They're pretty easy to find, so if you somehow remember Gustopher, let me know. You can check out all that stuff. I personally have never spoken to anyone who remembers this, but if you do, comment down below. I'll be surprised. Old Mac OS. Old Mac operating systems had this genuinely wonderful look to them that was just so nice to see. This may just be nostalgia talking, but I really do think that this was the peak of 2000's designer interfacing. Everything has this shiny, bubbly look to it with an emphasis on skeuomorphism, which was the design philosophy based on digital things resembling their real-life counterparts. Steve Jobs once said that everything on the Mac OS looks like you just want to lick it, which is absolutely true. The design of Mac OS just screams fun, and it really just accentuates that feeling of fun and futurism that the 2000s captured. I'm sure you all know that the Mac OS took a complete turn towards the opposite, removing all of shininess and realism from the operating system, leading it to just look flat and bland. Minimalism took over basically everywhere and let everything just have the same kind of look. Luckily, with the most recent Mac OS, they're slowly making a return to the OS having a more in-depth and characteristic look to it, which I'm really happy to see. The icons have more texture and bubbliness to them, so hopefully we kind of can revert back to that old look. Lunar Jim. Lunar Jim was a Canadian stop-motion cartoon from back in 2006. The show centered around a group of astronauts who lived on a base on the moon and went on different adventures. They used a bunch of different vehicles and tools on their moon base, which had some really unique designs. The show was cancelled six years after syndication, which is honestly much longer than I thought it lasted. I watched Lunar Jim as a little kid, and I loved it. Being a kid who was obsessed with space and space travel. Personally, just like Gustopher, I have never heard anyone talk about this show before. Do you remember it? iPod commercials. Back in the day, Apple's iPods had the coolest commercials out there. They featured silhouettes of people dancing with their iPods, with the iPod and the headphone cable being the only things in white, while everything else was in black or a different color. This made the cable and the iPod stick out, and made it kind of a fashionable device. They all featured different popular songs at the time, with a variety of different set pieces. These were super iconic, and were basically impossible to avoid at the time. Apple's actually released billboards in recent times as an homage to these old ads, which I love to see. Revenge of the Sith Revenge of the Sith was the final movie in the Star Wars saga, tying in the prequels in the original trilogy. The marketing and hype around this movie was genuinely so cool. I grew up with this movie and all of its market, being a kid in like 2005, 2006, 2007, when all you could see about Star Wars was basically just Revenge of the Sith. It was the best. The marketing heavily featured Lava and Darth Vader's helmet, which just genuinely went so hard. This was the 2000s, so they really keyed into that edgy punk rock aesthetic of the time. The advertisements for this movie, the video games, the toys, the t-shirts, the MTV music videos, hell, even the M&M's crossover were just so damn. I personally have a good chunk of Revenge of the Sith stuff, and my collection continues to grow stronger and stronger. Fudiger Arrow. Fudiger Arrow was one of the more prominent design aesthetics of the 2000s. This wonderfully playful, bubbly look was something that you would see all over the place back in the day. Fudigo Arrow had this general futuristic look to it that felt ideal. This beautiful look into what could be. Ironically, the future of our technology ended up being super flat and lost all of its personality. Fudigo Arrow was not really used anymore, but in recent times it's seen more attention from people remembering it on YouTube. I love this design aesthetic, and just the emotion that it adds to whatever it's used in. It really makes me feel like a kid again, and honestly, I think it should come back but in a genuine way, not like a kitschy sort of nostalgia bait way, but in an evolved sort of new way. 
I would love to see that. Jumpstart. Jumpstart was a series of educational computer games for a variety of different age groups. It was created in 1994, and they continued to make games for different age groups for years. Eventually, the games became third-person interactive 3D experiences, which then led to Jumpstart 3D Virtual World in 2009. Surprisingly enough, you can still play Jumpstart 3D to this day. I personally grew up with Jumpstart, originally with one of the kindergarten games for my little brother. I always thought it was cute and fun, but at the end of the game, there was an advertisement for Jumpstart 3D, and it looked mind-blowing. Eventually, I ended up playing Jumpstart 3D, and I loved it. I don't remember too much of it, but I do know it was really cool. Trash Pack. The Trash Pack was a series of toys that released in 2011. It was essentially anthropomorphic garbage items, and it was a ton of fun. It really appealed to that gross toy trend of years past, and the marketing was incredible. Every Trash Pack commercial made you really, really want the toys. I, I can say this from experience. The Trashies were essentially just squishy little rubber toys on the surface, but had a variety of different playsets, vehicles, and even the containers that they came in were part of the toy. They came in these brightly colored trash cans that would pop open when pressure was put on them, and they had a very satisfying little pop sound. The little characters were called Trashies. Now, some Trashy designs were genuinely really, really cool. Eventually, it started to heavily deviate from its garbage theme, but the designs were still interesting. They were essentially like the cool boy versions of Squinkies, which if you remember either of these, you're a real one. Bing and Bong. Bing and Bong Tiny Plants was a CGI animated TV show that was just the best. This English show featured two little aliens named Bing and Bong, and they visited a bunch of different planets and solved problems that the local inhabitants were facing. The show had a theme song, right? And it just went way too hard. And honestly, I think it still holds up to this day. I remember belting that song at the top of my lungs as a little kid. It, it, it just went that hard. The show was incredibly cute, and I remember it being very satisfying to look at. It wasn't very popular in the USA, but it was pretty popular in the United Kingdom. Many people forgot about the show, but hopefully seeing it here reminds them of it. If you haven't seen the show in a while, I recommend you check it out. There are a bunch of episodes on YouTube. It's a great watch. Dr. Dreadful. Dr. Dreadful was a line of candy creation toys where you'd essentially use a creepy looking device to create spooky themed candy. The first of these toys released in 1994 and continued to be made throughout the 2000s. The toys had some awesome commercials, which are still really fun to watch in my opinion. I personally grew up with these toys and I gotta be honest, they didn't taste that great. Eat them, right? Mm. Sour? Liar! But that didn't matter, it was the fun of making your own candy that was the main appeal, and the spooky theme was just perfect. Themed restaurants. Themed restaurants were very popular back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Think Rainforest Cafe, the Jekyll and Hyde Club, or even a themed McDonald's. There were so many cool themed restaurants back in the day, but the majority have closed down. My favorite was Mars 2112. A themed restaurant based on the experience of visiting Mars in the year 2112. The restaurant was full of aliens and cool themed food. One of the aliens you may be familiar with. Another insanely cool one was the Jekyll and Hyde Club. This gothic 1930s themed restaurant was full of skeletons and animatronics on the walls while actors roamed around and interacted with guests. Unfortunately, both of these restaurants have closed down and only live on in our memories. And this YouTube channel, basically. If you want to learn more about Jekyll and Hyde, I've actually got a great video covering it, and in that video, I visit the place with the one and only Paige Neiman. Yeah, like the Ariana Grande lookalike. That one. So, whether or not you believe me, check it out. It was, uh, it's a good video, it's a good watch. Nina and Star Nina and Star, otherwise known as the Good Night Show, was a nighttime themed block that would play to help kids go to sleep. It featured a woman named Nina and a little star puppet. This would air on the channel Sprout, which alone should bring back a ton of memories. The Good Night Show was really, really cute, and I personally loved it as a little kid. While researching for this video, I learned some things that kind of surprised me about this show. The block aired from 2005 all the way until 2017, which is surprising. But even more than that, I learned that the actress that played Nina was fired from the show because Sprout learned that she'd featured on inappropriate PSA parodies around teenage pregnancy on the website technicalvirgin.com. This felt very unfair to tons of people, and honestly, I agree. Still a really adorable show, tons of childhood memories. Wonder Pets Wonder Pets was a children's cartoon that aired on Nick Jr. back in 2006. The style of the show was very unique and used actual images of animals edited to be all cute and cartoony. The show was adorable and beloved by many children. There were toys and video games along that too. The show really was adorable, and it was the leading cause of children eating celery in the 2000s. Smiley Sings 
Smiley Sings refers to a trend of videos with a little smiley face in Microsoft Paint singing different songs. This was achieved by essentially just using the transform tool and dragging the mouse up and down to the lyrics of the song to make it look like the face was singing. The most famous of these being the smiley singing Green Day's hit song, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I don't mean to get all cheesy or anything, but I really love this video. It's just so pure and innocent and reminds me of better times on YouTube. Back before the controversy, the exploitation, the soulless crash grab YouTubers, Elsa Gate, the drama, just good old videos and people having fun. I love it. Skellington's Revenge Skellington's Revenge is one of the most iconic and well-made YouTube poops ever. The video is a play on the Nightmare Before Christmas, only this time, Jack becomes so obsessed with taking over Christmas that he summons a Bugs Bunny demon to aid him. This all happens to affect the denizens of Bikini Bottom, alongside some other characters like the cast of TF2, Fluttershy, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and more. It all culminates in an incredibly well done battle, which is genuinely really cool. And honestly, it gave me chills when I watched it as a kid when I was like 9 years old. The video is an actual cinematic masterpiece, and I recommend it if you haven't already seen it. All the humor is just so 2013, but it kind of holds up. Angry Kid Angry Kid was a series of shorts created by Ardman Animation, the same people behind Wallace and Grummet. They focused around this snotty little British kid who had a human body, but a claymation face. The series was uploaded on YouTube back in 2008, and continued to be uploaded for years. This feels like one of those things that would just be at the back of your mind, only being awakened by seeing it years later. And in all honesty, I find Angry Kid to be a bit creepy. It's a strange little show, but I definitely see the charm. Noodle Kidoodle Noodle Kidoodle was a chain of stores in the United States that was around from 1993 to 2000. It's a similar concept to Zany Brainy from earlier in the iceberg. The store sold educational toys and books, and was beloved by children of the time. Many people vaguely remember the little rainbow-haired nerd character, and I'm sure seeing him in this iceberg will bring back many memories. Spitting Image Spitting Image is a puppet-based political satire show that uses these very uncanny and really lifelike puppets, portraying politicians and celebrities. The show always covers topical things going on in the world, and has been running from 1984 to now. You might recognize their puppets of Trump, Biden, and Greta Thunberg. Bunchy the Green Llama Bunchy the Green Llama is an iconic gif of this green character jumping around on loop. This thing is so classic and I genuinely love it. Lots of people were actually really creeped out by it, but I always thought it was just hilarious. I remember this classic Try Not To Laugh video that featured Bunchy with the Thomas the Tank theme in the background and it was comedy genius. Tax Doctor Commercial This entry is referring to a commercial aired by a company called Tax Doctor that specializes in helping people deal with their taxes so they don't have to have trouble with the IRS. Now this commercial would not be memorable if not for the little character. This character is charming, yet unnerving at the same time, and his animation is very amateur and it just screams mid-2000s. There's also a Spanish version of the Tax Doctor ad and a 2D one. There's something almost uncanny about these commercials. They feel almost like they're advertising a service that isn't really legal. And it turns out, it might not be. Check out YouTuber Sunflower's video on the subject. They'll explain more. Bob takes over YouTube. Back when YouTube started to forcefully introduce Google Plus onto YouTube, a rebellion of sorts took place on YouTube comments. This is Bob. He's made of just a bunch of different forms of text. There was a copy pasta using Bob in his tank, which read, Bob is building an army. This tank and Bob are against Google+. Copy and paste is all over YouTube if you are with us. And I remember commenting this on YouTube back in the day, and I will forever be a part of Bob's army. Maybe Bob should come back and fight against Elsa Gay. Not a bad idea. Smile Butterfly. The century speaks for itself. The song Butterfly by Smile.dk was an incredibly popular song in the early 2000s, but it's also iconic for being a sound effect used by cheap knockoff toys. They would always use a super compressed loop of the chorus. <laughs> The song is unforgettable due to how many things it was used in, and it always brings me back, especially if I hear it at a party or something like that. Leo Kim Video Leo Kim Video is a YouTube channel that covers a wide variety of things, but back when it was most popular in the early 2010s, it was mostly a channel that featured a wide variety of toy reviews, and toy destructions, and also bugs, and stuff like that. Look, I say this with love, but this channel is weird as hell, but I love it for that. You see, Leo, the owner of the channel, is an Australian man who encounters a lot of different bugs, mostly poisonous spiders. A lot of the videos on this channel feature him capturing and encountering these critters, a lot of them having millions of views. Leo Kim Video also features a lot of ghost sighting videos, and this one video of a woody doll moving in its box, which honestly convinced me as a kid that this doll was alive. 
He also featured his two kids in the video, who would usually butt heads, leading to very entertaining conflict. Leo's first video is this very bizarre short film to name Mr. Potato Head Adventures with Bluebell, which is something that I would repeatedly try to watch and comprehend as a kid since it had a great thumbnail, but I never really got it. This channel also has a heavy emphasis on Thomas the Tank Engine, which, which appeals to that entire niche. Looking back on this channel is incredibly nostalgic for me. I used to watch the hell out of his videos, and my favorite growing up were the Minion Dark Side videos, the Trash Bag videos, and of course, the Flicky Chicken video. Creepy PSAs. Back in the 2000s, kids ended up watching a lot of very disturbing public service announcements. Many of these are burned into our collective memories, such as the woman slipping with the pot of oil, the photograph PSA, and that classic creepy one about how children see their parents when they're drunk. These PSAs were pretty creepy back in the day, but are now looked back on fondly by those who grew up with them. I remember revisiting a lot of them while creating the Childhood Trauma Iceberg videos, and they definitely sent me back. Chicken Invaders Chicken Invaders is an ongoing series of video games that stems all the way back to 1999. Chicken Invaders is a shoot 'em up very similar to something like Galaga, only instead of aliens, you shoot chickens. The game is bizarre to say the least, but has a really undeniable charm to it. Chicken Invaders is still getting sequels to this day, and its most recent one is free on Steam. This game genuinely feels like such a fever dream. I remember my dad showing it to me way back when I was like 2 or 3 years old, which made seeing it over 15 years later feel crazy. The Abyss. Going forward from here, many of these entries will be more obscure, and most likely only live in the deep recesses of your mind. McWorld. McWorld is a McDonald's-based MMO that, like many others of its time, ran on Flash. You could create your own character and play mini-games within the world, Something that was actually very special about McWorld is that you could actually get codes in a real-life Happy Meal that you could then put into the game and receive awards. The game was shut down in 2014, but lived a good life while it was still around. Wee Me Wee Me is a very classic YouTube video about two little boys playing on their Wii. They end up deciding to make a me of the little one, which eventually ends up looking just like him. The me ends up essentially becoming a voodoo doll of the boy, Griffin. The bigger kid plays around with his me, and the actual boy does everything that the me does, while his brother is oblivious. He eventually ends up deleting the me, which actually deletes the boy in real life. The bigger kid is still oblivious and just decides to play Guitar Hero. The video is so classic, and before making this video I'd completely forgot about it, but I'm sure I'd seen this back in the day. I shared the sentiment earlier in the video, but I adore videos like this. They're just genuine and made for fun. The old digital camera and the primitive green screen just make me feel at peace and at home. SpongeBob Sick Pants SpongeBob Sick Pants is a video created by animator Chris O'Neill, who you might know nowadays as the host of Oni Plays. SpongeBob Sick Pants is the spiritual successor to one of his original videos, The Sixins, a Simpsons parody, obviously. SpongeBob Sick Pants is a very interesting animation to say the least. It's very bizarre and violent, and the point is to be shock humor. Squidward Red misses himself, they murder some fish, there's a lot of puke, Sandy's on drugs, they find a boy's corpse. It's just an insane video. Chris O'Neill now thinks the video is terrible, but I personally think it kinda has its charm. Definitely a traumatic, nostalgic memory for a lot of people. Hello aus Berlin. Hello aus Berlin was a German CGI miniseries designed to teach young children the language. The video was pretty popular when it was uploaded to YouTube, with many people finding the animation really funny and charming while enjoying the music. The Barney Bunch. The Barney Bunch is a bizarre series of YouTube videos featuring Barney with a bunch of other characters from children's media. The characters are all voiced with text to speech and get into a bunch of different situations. It's weird, but you know, it definitely had its audience. Speakonia. Speakonia was a software that was essentially just a text to speech generation tool made to assist people who are visually impaired. You most likely recognize these voices since they were used all over the internet in a variety of different uses. Some find these voices kind of unnerving, and I kind of get that, but I still love them and I find them very nostalgic. Skippy Shorts. Skippy Shorts was a YouTube channel that featured short videos featuring this funny little puppet named Skippy. The channel was never the most popular, but it definitely had its fans. The comedy in these videos is pure mid-2000s, and it's fun to look back at what people found funny back then. The Boy Who Turned Into a Gas Pump Book The century is referring to a book that was a bit of a mystery online. A lot of people remember a very strange book from the early 90s about a boy who turned into a gas pump. It was debated whether or not it was actually real by people online who had never read it. However, it turns out that the book is indeed real. A YouTuber by the name of Wang made a video talking about the mystery. Eventually, the book was found, and despite being very rare, scans of the book were uploaded online. And it turns out, the name of the book was Super Geels. Did anyone watching this video read this book growing up? Zone TV Zone TV is a series of videos made by the infamous NSFW cartoon artist Zone. 
he created a character by the name of Zontan, a female demon character who is essentially the mascot of his whole brand. ZTV was a non-pornographic news show parody featuring a bunch of other popular animators of its time. It's genuinely pretty funny. I personally don't like Zone, but I do think that these ZTV videos are pretty entertaining. They still sometimes come out with Zone TV videos, but the uploads are very sporadic. Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret the entry is referring to a Lost Screamer video that claimed to show how to unlock Luigi in Super Mario 64. The video featured Mario with blue clothes and text showing how to allegedly unlock Luigi, this text being very Windows Movie Maker. After doing some different things to unlock Luigi, the Kefi zombie jump scare plays. This video is classified as partially found since there is kinda some surviving footage of it. There is a video of a little boy watching it and being scared by it, but the video in this is almost impossible to make out. Another thing that still exists from the video is the thumbnail. Aside from that, the video is lost, but there are some pretty convincing remakes on YouTube, which is probably what you've been looking at. I remember watching the video back in the day, and obviously being very freaked out by the jump scare, but what made the video more creepy was the atmosphere, the weird blue Mario, and the sound in the background. I hope someday this video is found. The Kitty Cat Dance Cat, I'm a kitty cat, and I dance, 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 and I dance, dance, dance. Cat, I'm a kitty cat, and I dance, 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 and I dance, dance, dance. Kitty Cat Dance is a classic viral video created by Steve Ibs in 2004. The song in the video is really catchy, and people around the world adore it. Unfortunately, the video was re-uploaded many times uncredited, and it got so popular to the point where Hot Topic was selling shirts with Steve Katz on it without giving him any credit or profit, which is pretty unfortunate. But Steve later sold his original video as an NFT as a way of finally getting credit and money for his creation. The kitty cat dance lives on to this day, and it even has what seems to be kind of a parody of it in Fortnite. Heaven. Here we find the most true and real parts of our childhood nostalgia. Those feelings of pure, real bliss that we only felt in the past. Are you ready to go back? Your friends from elementary school. Remember your friends from your early school days? The people that you'd spend endless hours playing with. The people who you felt like you'd know for the rest of your life. Remember your connection with them? All of your sweet childhood memories. Are you still in contact with any of them? How much do you really remember from those days? Have you picked up a toy from way back then and just become awash with pure nostalgia? If you haven't, I encourage you to look back. Our friends from our early days shaped who we became today. Without them, our childhoods wouldn't be as wonderful. Random kind strangers. Remember those random people who showed you completely unexpected kindness and compassion? Remember them for their small good deeds that made our days just a small bit better. I wish every kind stranger I came across in my childhood a good life and happiness. I strongly believe that they deserve it. Often the kindest people are those who have been deeply hurt in the past. So I wish every single person out there who extends kindness to others a wonderful life. And I pray that life reflects to them the kindness that they give to others. Kids you met at the park. Remember making that best friend that you would see once and then never again? Perhaps you both rode the tire swing together, or played Beyblade in one of those big red plastic arenas. You'd spend hours with your new friend, playing and having the most fun in the world, until it was time to leave. You both prayed that you'd see each other at the park another time, but that time never came. You both live on in each other's memories, forever just being a distant, fond memory. To all the kids I met at the park, I hope you're doing well. I love you all. Lost Media you're probably familiar with Lost Media. It's pretty self-explanatory. I know personally that there's so much media online that I consumed as a kid that is lost forever, especially with Flash Player being killed off. Many of us remember things that came from years past that we just cannot find despite how hard we try. Even something that I spoke about early in this iceberg that I loved, being the Zula World game, is mostly lost. I adored this game, but there's very little footage of it remaining. What kind of things do you remember? Your dreams. Childhood dreams are unlike any others. The pure sense of whimsy and fun seemingly can't be recreated in adulthood. I know that as a kid, I had some dreams that I can still remember to this day. Some of them terrifying, while others incredibly magical. I recall being able to fly, being able to travel to my favorite fictional worlds and meet all my favorite characters. I remember dreaming about the most amazing video games and the most amazing cartoon episodes. I remember one episode of Max and Ruby featuring my favorite alien from Mars 2112, Captain Orion. If we're lucky, sometimes we can have a dream that kind of recaptures that pure magic from our pasts. It may be rare, but it is fantastic and we savor the time that we do have. Do you remember any of your favorite childhood dreams? Fake nostalgia. Our memories from childhood aren't the most reliable storytellers. A lot of people imagine or misremember things that happened in their youth that they end up believing to be real. I'm sure this has happened to me and many others. Fake nostalgia can be best described by the word anemoya. 
Nostalgia for a time that you've never known. This leads people to feel nostalgia for events and places that they've never experienced in their lives. Yet the feeling is just as real as any actual childhood memory. Some people feel anamoic when listening to a song that they've heard for the first time, visiting a new location, and especially observing images of places that feel oddly familiar yet disturbing. This leads me to the next entry. Liminal space. Have you ever seen something that makes you feel at home yet creeped out at the same time? You might have been looking at or walking around a liminal space. These images and spaces instill such a specific feeling of nostalgic dread that results in the most wonderful yet disturbing sensation. Remember the smell of this place? What about this one? Remember that plasticky stillness, the smell of the summer air while spending the day playing flash games on your mom's computer? Remember that bedroom that your mom's friend's kid had? Despite only visiting once or twice, the memory of those rooms stay in the back of your head. Remember waiting for your checkup at the doctor's office with that looming anxiety of possibly getting a shot? Remember playing with little wooden marble toys and looking around at all the other kids near you? Some of these liminal spaces aren't of any sort of place that we could have actually visited in the past. Many of these liminal space pictures feel like something straight out of a dream. Think about a movie theater in the dead of night after watching a long movie. There's something almost magical about walking around this massive empty theater. The smell of popcorn and carpet still remains. The sight of empty arcades, fun houses, theme parks, pools, waiting rooms brings back so many memories of places that we've never been to. Liminality represents places of transition. These places weren't the destination, but instead, stops along the way. Another big thing about liminal spaces is the feeling that you get when actually exploring them in modern times. The feeling of walking around an empty airport that hasn't been redesigned since the 90s. The feeling of staying in a house from the 80s. And of course, the feeling of being in your grandparents' house. Which is something I'm kind of fascinated in. There's an incredibly bittersweet feeling being in your grandparents' house after one has passed away or are deteriorating from Alzheimer's. This house that used to be a place of joy as a kid without you or your cousins now feels like an eerily empty and quiet zone. The liminal space is something that I have a very close attachment to and is a feeling that really affects me. If you want to hear more about it, I've got an entire video covering it with my fellow YouTuber Shooky. Old home movies. Gen Z grew up in the perfect time to have a ton of home movies taken to them before the rise of smartphones, making everything centralized and compact. Many of us still have those old digital point-and-shoot cameras just sitting in a drawer somewhere, filled with tons of incredibly nostalgic home movies taken by our parents, of us doing anything, whether it was just playing with toys, going to fun places, and especially celebrating our birthdays over the years. It can be incredibly beautiful, yet saddening to experience and relive these early childhood memories that only really exist in our minds, and the memories of those who experience them. I have so many home movies that only exist on an old Mac Mini from 2006. I don't have the proper wires or adapters to get it running, so that little computer just lives as a genuine time capsule of the 2000s. I want to one day get that computer up and running so I can relive my childhood memories one more time. Your old pets. Growing up, our pets were often our best friends and many of us have hundreds of unforgettable memories with our pets, who unfortunately have most likely passed away since. The joy that these animals brought us, and I'm sure that we brought to them, is something that we should never forget. My favorite pet growing up was a blood parrot fish named Dorothy, inspired by Elmo's fish. I loved Dorothy with all of my heart, and I imagined up so many stories and adventures of me and Dorothy. Whenever I got a new toy that I was excited about, I would push it up against the tank and show her. Whenever I wanted to just talk about whatever was on my mind, I would talk to Dorothy. My mom and I even made books chronicling the stories of Ray and Dorothy. Dorothy lived for years. Eventually, after buying two pet crabs, she tried to eat them and became aggressive to the other fish in her older age. In an attempt to save the crabs, we scooped Dorothy up and gave her to the pet store for them to sell. I wonder if she's still alive, honestly. And I wonder if she's okay. Another one of my childhood pets was a parakeet named Rocky. He was a beautiful blue little bird and was incredibly intelligent. He didn't like being held, but he loved playing with us. Rocky and I would roll a ball back and forth to each other for hours. Rocky had a good life, but was a very picky bird and only ate seeds. This led him to be unhealthy later in life, and unfortunately he passed away in 2018, leaving me and my brother distraught. I want you to remember your childhood pets, say their names in the comments, and share your stories, because the joy that they brought us should never be forgotten. So, that fully puts an end to the Gen Z nostalgia iceberg. If you've been watching since part 1 all the way back in 2021, I just want to give you a huge thank you for sticking with this series despite how long it took to finally finish it. I also want to thank Book of Vows for helping out with this series. His collaboration is much appreciated. 
This was a wonderful video series to work on, and I'm so glad that I made it. Thank you to the best YT peer for making this wonderful iceberg and helping us all remember our past. This may be the end of the iceberg era of this channel. I've moved on from the format to make informative video essays. Now, I'm not saying I'll never do an iceberg video again, but as far as my plans go for content, this is it. And I think it's the perfect bookend to that era. I start by showing you your disturbing past memories from a long time ago, and I end by showing you your favorite warm fuzzy memories that you cherish and adore. Over the past two years, you've grown to know and love my favorite restaurant mascot, as a representation of myself. I would have never thought, all the way back in March of 2021 when I started working on this channel, that two years later there would be a full merchandise shop with the character and plushies on the way. None of this would happen without you. It's poetic almost. I've loved making these videos for you all over the years, and the support that you all give me is nothing short of amazing. So I've been Raymundo2112, you've been a great audience, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, and good night. Hey, um, what are you still doing here? Video's, like, done, you know. Uh, I guess there's some people who are, like, listening to this, so I guess that's why you're still here. Or you're crying because it was such an emotional ending and, and it was just such a good video. Uh, either way, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, nostalgia's good. Check out this lighter. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. This is a bad camera. This is my webcam mic. Uh, you can see my cool shirt, though. I love this. It's awesome. It's so cool. Um, yeah, so that was that was the video. You know, um, it's it's been a while, and uh, this is the final like iceberg video. It's the well, first time I've done an hour long thing in a while now, which is you know, it's good to get back to it. Um, if you watched all the way, you probably made me like a solid fifty cents worth of ads. So like, thank you very much. That's uh, it's much appreciated. You know. Um, but yeah, no, um, very cool. Thank you so much. See you next time.